Right. The court will call 20 CR 1358 versus Letitia Stock. Record should reflect the jury is not present in the courtroom. Um, counsel, approach, please. All right, before we bring the jury in, there was one thing that we should have done yesterday that we didn't, uh, and I told Mr. Tolini we could um, do it at a different time, um, and now is that time. Um, I, uh, Mr. Tolini, did you have motions that you wanted to make? I, I do, Your Honor. I would make Go motions ahead. for judgment of acquittal on all charges, specifically for the first degree murder premeditation. There has been lack of evidence showing premeditation on behalf of the defendant. Okay. Prosecution. Your Honor, um, there's been more than enough evidence presented on uh, premeditation as it relates to count one, uh, specifically and most glaringly in the form of those uh, searches that were discovered on the defendant's phone, uh, evidencing uh, a desire to leave the state of Colorado to uh, seek uh, employment and housing out of state for uh, a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment in Orlando, Florida. And then obviously all of the efforts that were put forth by the defendant to then cover up the crime showing uh, consciousness of guilt. And so we would ask the court to deny the uh, motion for judgment of acquittal. All right. Um, the standard that the court must apply at this point uh, or at this stage in the proceedings is that the court must take the evidence in light most favorable to the prosecution and determine whether or not there is sufficient evidence upon which a jury could conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty of the charges uh, that have been brought against her. Um, with respect to um, defense counsel's argument regarding premeditation, um, there are uh, messages or, or indications uh, that uh, the defendant uh, was uh, conducting searches regarding um, a life elsewhere, essentially, uh, jobs, uh, places to live, uh, perhaps even connections with uh, singles uh, in another area. Um, there's also indications that uh, the defendant may have been unhappy in her marriage, uh, that there was a discussion about that, but nothing was uh, necessarily reached. There was a statement by the defendant at some point in time in which she said, I should have just left last week. Um, <coughs> all of this occurred before um, the uh, death of Gannon. Um, it's not surprising, or this would not be the first case in which uh, someone was in an unhappy marriage and some crime was committed as a result of that. Um, I think there is sufficient evidence upon which a jury uh, could conclude, if it were to believe that evidence credible and give weight to that evidence, uh, a jury could conclude uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant was guilty. Again, the court has to take the evidence uh, at this stage of the proceeding in the light most favorable to the prosecution and must not make any credibility determinations uh, at this point either. As such, uh, the court believes that uh, it is a jury issue uh, for jurors to determine whether or not uh, the prosecution has in fact established beyond a reasonable doubt all of the uh, charges which it has brought. Um, is there anything else that we need to address, prosecution? No, that, not anything that we can think of, this. Defense? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cook is retrieving Dr. Lewis. Okay, so she's not in the building yet? That's my understanding. Okay. Um, do we know where she is? 
or how far away? During transit. Okay, so probably about like yesterday, about five, 10 minutes or so, something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, court will be in recess then until uh, we have Dr. Lewis. All right.
1358, uh, People versus Letitia Stauk. Record should reflect the jury is not present in the courtroom. Um, we do have uh, our witness on the stand, Dr. Lewis. I would just remind you, uh, ma'am, that you're still under oath. Um, is there anything else that we need to take up at this point? Prosecution? No, Your Honor. Defense? No, okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. I'll tell you what's going on with our one juror. Yeah. Just keep an eye on it. Um, I'll try and watch it, see if she. So. <laughs> All rise for the jury, please. May be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, has anything occurred since we were last together that causes any of you to believe you could not continue to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? If so, please raise your hand. No response. All right, when we took our break yesterday, we were in the midst of the cross-examination of Dr. Lewis. That's where we will resume. Mr. Young? Good morning. Morning, Dr. Lewis. How are you? Good morning. You okay? In truth, I, I've had uh, food poisoning since last night, but oh. we'll carry on as best we can. I'm sorry to hear that. If you need to take a break or anything, just... If I do, I'll let you know. Okay. okay. All right. I, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about disassociative identity disorder. Uh, during direct examination yesterday, you mentioned that there was some controversy with regards to that diagnosis. Could you expand on that? What is the controversy surrounding that diagnosis? Well, the, uh, the essential controversy is whether uh, people believe it exists or not. I could give you an example of that. When I inquired of the chair of our department many years ago, did he believe that this existed? He said, I don't know, I have never seen it. Uh, and this is the kind of uh, resistance there is to it. It's becoming more recognized and it's in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual now so that uh, it's gaining acceptance, understanding. Also, I think with the ability to uh, photograph things and to show things, it's becoming a more well-recognized uh, disorder. Dissociation has been long recognized. It was uh, really described very well by Freud. Got it. Um, in your book, you mentioned that oftentimes people can act out multi-personality disorder or disassociative identity disorder. And there's been several movies that kind of portray that. Do you recall talking about that? No, but uh, I'm aware that there are movies such as, I think, Sybil and others like that where, uh, where this has been done, and more recently in some in movies. And the movie Sybil was based on a true life story, right? That's correct, but I think Cornelia, a very, very well-respected 
uh, psychiatrist wrote about it, and it has been also made into a movie. And the actual person that Sybil is named for actually turned out that that person was faking multi-personality disorder. Do you remember that? I, I'm sorry, I don't. I'm not familiar enough with the case uh, so that I, I can't comment intelligently about it. Okay. <laughs> Have you worked with any actors and helping them in their roles in movies? No, I don't. Wait one moment. In, the, in their roles in, in dissociation? Yes. Uh, Hate Fear, Robert De Niro? Uh, with, I have assisted Robert De Niro in, uh, I don't think it had to do with, uh, with DID. I think it had to do with uh, a, a different movie that he was making that, uh, where I agreed to assist them. But it, I don't believe it had to do with DID. Had to do with him being a psychopath? It had to do with, uh, with his being a very dangerous guy. Uh, and that's the movie Cape Fear, where he's a murderer and he has an urge to kill and things like that. I, I don't okay. know all the details of the movie, but right. is that a I, fair summary of it? I don't know. The, the, there was a better one earlier than his that is a far better Cape Fear. The original. I did assist him in it, and he did, uh, I did give him access to some uh, tapes that, that we had of, of people with different kinds of disorders. Did they include disassociated identity disorder? Among them, there were some that did, some that didn't, yes. So how do you tell if someone's acting and they're, uh, they're, they want you to believe well, that they have multi-personalities? Uh, well, I can tell you what I do. The, uh, yeah, tell us, please. Okay. Uh, what, what I like to do is uh, be able to, to show that there were unmistakable signs of these kinds of switches, changes, uh, different uh, states, different abilities to function long before I was ever asked to be uh, involved in, in any case. And uh, so that, that is one of the best, one of the best ways I think that's the best way. It's that, to, to my mind, if I'm teaching, I will say to students, this is as close as you get to an MRI in, in this field where you have something that was done. And again, I repeat, you can't retrospectively malinger. You can't write your name in a funny way or pretend to be somebody when you're 18, because when you're 35, you're planning to kill someone and you think you, you need a good excuse. That is, makes no sense. So that it's important for me and for the people with whom I work to be able to, well, identify in any number of ways whether these signs, symptoms, behaviors uh, antedated any difficulty with the law or any, any current issue. Sure. Things like family members coming in and saying, God, she didn't remember my name for long periods of time, or she blacked out and couldn't remember where she was at. What are you referring to now? Who? For signs of disassociative identity disorder, retroactive. No. Uh, that Wouldn't it, mean anything to you? Well, that, that alone, no. That's very little bit. However, uh, if you, let's say, if, let's say you're looking through somebody's work and you're looking through their um their high school uh you know notebooks or you're looking through early uh, early pictures early signatures things of that nature uh and that these things way antedated any problematic behaviors later on that you know any legal issues that is the kind of thing where uh well, we found, for example, uh, in um, in the workbooks of children at school, uh, where we've we've gone through them and we have found a different name that was used, and that was used at different times. Just and so, if I could, just yeah. Dr. Lewis, you're saying that the writing would be more important than an individual saying. Um, I blacked out for long periods of times. I have no recollection of what happened. 
and there's no explanation. Of oh, I'm sorry. Cell Can phones it, off, please. I think it may be. I. That your cell phone, Dr. Lewis? I think it might be. I mean, I can okay. Assist. All right. Loads up. It's very nice. <laughs> yeah, if you just, can you turn it silent? I'm trying to find it. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, okay. This should do it. Okay. Let's. Um, I mean, give it to Eric. Why don't you give it to Eric? Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Sure. Let me know when you're ready, Dr. Lewis. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't recall your, your last I'll, question. I'll read ask it. Ready? Mm -hmm. So, is it more important to you to look at someone's prior handwriting than evidence of someone saying they had blackout periods and couldn't remember where they were at and they couldn't remember their loved ones' names and things like that? Uh, the your second examples just don't ring true because it just is not something that I that people tend to tell me. Uh, it's and you can't measure this versus that. Often there have to be several things and combinations of uh, signs, symptoms, behaviors. Uh, what, what is particularly useful is whether acquaintances or uh, family members or uh, people who have known the person over time have said, uh, gee, when this person was such and such uh, an age, he or she insisted on being called this and acted differently and did different things so that it's one, it's a date, a piece of data. And, uh, but that in and of itself, there is no single, uh, there is no single thing that you look for, but at least in the cases where we have felt that we were dealing with the real thing, uh, there have been multiple pieces of evidence that at earlier times, for, for example, I noticed in some of my notes about uh, Leticia that someone had said when she was younger, and I forgot this yesterday, when she was younger, she asked to be called Maria. And I had forgotten that yesterday. Can you point me out where you found that information? I would have to, I'd have to look through all of this, but I can later if you like, I'll find it for you. It's just a note that I took because I thought it was interesting. But uh, what, was it in an interview or where did you get that note? I, I, as I say, rather than take up the time of the court and look through all of this, I will find it for you. But I, I just noticed it in the past maybe several hours or so. And I can find it for you because... Well, here's the deal. I only have an X yes. amount of time to talk to you. Right, yes. <laughs> and so I can't uh, really let this linger around because it's yeah. pretty significant. I think so, yes. Uh, uh, oh, dear. Um, I'm sorry, I can tell you though that I uh, came upon it uh, in the past maybe 12 hours or so. Well, do you know uh, if it's something that the defendant told you? Uh, no, it was not. That's what was interesting that uh, I had completely forgotten this, but I saw that someone who had been interviewed said when she was a child, at times she asked to be called Maria. That in and of itself is not uh, a proof of anything, but it's a confirmation if you have a lot of other things that, that go along with it. Um, well, it's certainly not in any police reports, correct? Uh, 
As far as, no, it's not police reports. It would be in a report that the defense yeah. gave you? Um, Here, uh, again, I I will be taking notes as I'm going through stuff and whatever. And uh, here I have Letitia yes, notes. Dr. Like Lewis, this. Dr. Lewis. Yes. Uh, the way we have to do this is you need to read that to yourself and see if that refreshes your memory. And then once you've done that, I can ask you some questions. Okay. Because I don't have that that you have in front of you. No. Um, Uh, again, these are simply what I took and labeled Letitia notes from relatives. Can't tell you exactly who, but uh, here it says, L, Letitia called self Maria Sanchez as a young child. And I have a little uh, explanation when saying retrospective malingering, because that, uh, you know, we don't do that. At, at 12, you don't call yourself Maria because later on you're expecting to do something where you're going to have to make some sort of excuse. Um, so this is, uh, this is what one of her relatives had told us, that, uh, that she called herself Maria Sanchez as a young child. This came as a surprise to me. I had not recalled it, but I was skimming it and there it was and, and dr lewis you've testified hundreds of times and you know that you're going to turn over your notes and everything you rely on as an expert in the prosecution don't you is that a question yes it is no when i obligations as an expert to turn over all the information that you use in formulating your opinions correct well when i am sitting taking notes over different things mm -hmm. i do not necessarily even keep everything, I jot down something that I think may be important later, and I noticed that I jotted this down. And it's so important that you found out about it last night, you came in and decided to tell the jury about it today. Is that correct? I, I came upon it last night, I believe before this morning, yes. And it's so important you made an effort to put it in your report that you knew that the prosecution was going to get, is that correct? No, it is not. I sat when I was going over notes trying to pulled together things ages ago uh, and jotted that down because I thought, gee, that's odd. Uh, she had just mentioned Maria to me uh, very recently, and somebody had said this. When I wrote down L called self Maria as a young child, if I thought I was going to have to prove this particular statement to someone, I would have written down who said it or whatever. I was pulling together my thoughts at the time and going through and seeing what kinds of things seemed to matter. And it is a note taken while I was going through hundreds of pages of notes. And to my surprise, this appeared. And I had no memory of having seen it before until I looked at it, uh, skimming through it, and, uh, and found it in the past, I would say, 12 hours or so. It was until you realized you had nothing to corroborate your diagnosis that she was Maria Sanchez and you needed to come up with something. Is that right? No. It was Why written. Why wasn't that in your report, doctor? If it was that significant. That's the only corroboration you have. Why is it not in your report? It is not the only corroboration that we have, sir. This is, a, this is an observation as you go through hundreds of pages of notes and you see something there that you hadn't expected. And so I'll jot it down and think, gee, that's kind of interesting. But there are many other pieces of evidence that there were other times that, uh, that she apparently used other names and that she signed differently. But uh, for example, there are notes where there are different names, but if you really study them, it turns out 
they were her names. They were before she was married, they were when she was married to one person, then to another. And I will write them down because what at first may look as if, gee, why, why is there this name? Uh, you know, it, it, did she use that? And then uh, you're an idiot if you say, oh, yeah, she was uh, in an altered state. Well, no, she was in an unmarried state or she was married to a different person. So that when I'm going through things, I'll jot something down. I happened to jot this down because I thought, how come that early? I didn't become aware of, I don't think I became aware of the Maria character until I had interviewed her. Yeah, that's when everyone became aware of it. Well, it's here I... It's to you yeah. that family members, including her daughter, Harley Hunt, her husband, Al Stout, had never seen any signs or any evidence that she had different personalities. I, I can't comment on that because people's uh, ability to recognize things, the ways in things question, the ways things are asked make a difference. So I can't in general say, yes, this matters. No, it does not. This is interesting. Well, let somebody me, knows let me, let me, before you go off on another tangent, let me finish my question, okay? You consider that, that there was no evidence by family members that she had no patients that she had disassociated uh, that specifically, yes. I, I, I did not think about that specifically because uh, different uh, personas are either recognized differently because of the sensitivity of the observer uh, or they don't uh, occur in that setting and uh, they occur in another setting. Uh, as it doesn't help your diagnosis of a disassociative identity disorder, correct? Is that why you don't consider it? No, it it is. It's interesting that they did not notice this. Uh, it may even be one of them who who said this. Who said, "No, I never noticed anything different." And yet, uh, one of these people said uh, that. I think we got what your note herself. says, doctor. Okay. Well, that that could well be one of the people who said, "I never noticed she was different." But, oh, she sometimes she called herself Maria, so that you're just, you're open to whatever comes your way. You try to jot down what seems important, and then you try to pull it together later. But there is no one thing that will uh, say, oh, yes, this person suffers from DID or does not. There's, you know, there's a whole constellation of uh of different things that you look at, that you consider, and uh, no one thing that matters okay. particularly. Let's talk about something that matters to you that you put in your report, okay? You had Ms. Stout drew, uh, I forget the name of the test, where they draw the clock and they have to put the hands of the clock. What's the name of that test? I don't know. I call it clock. <laughs> we'll call it the clock test. Is that, okay. is that right with you? Yeah. So you had her perform the clock test, and she did horrible on it. Well, she, uh, she did something that I have seen before on, uh, with like older patients who have been actually demented. And uh, I actually consulted Dr. Marikangas about it and others uh, because it looks as though there is some kind of a defect in the ability to see certain areas. And so that the everything was crowded into one area. And I have seen this in patients with, uh, with dementia. And dementia can be caused by many different injuries. Uh, so that I, I was surprised. Uh, the other thing that is surprising is that uh, I didn't know quite what to make of it. I knew I'd it was something unusual. And I had asked her again, would you do this again? And, uh, and she did a, a much better job of it. And then I remembered I jotted down L because uh, when she had done something with her right hand, and then I hadn't asked her to change hands at that point. But I wondered, why are these different? And uh, one with the left hand had been done one way and with the right hand another way. Uh, 
so that she, uh, she functioned differently. And also she functioned differently at different times, which, was, which puzzled me. This is partly why I very much wanted to consult a neurologist because uh, I, I don't feel that I am uh, familiar enough, skilled enough, trained enough to, uh, to say this is the section of, uh, of the optic area that, that I think is functioning differently at this time. Did, but, uh, did the thought ever cross your mind that she could be faking it? just wanting to have you have the opinions you have pretty, pretty easy right to mess up the hands on the clock no one didn't mess up the hands on the clock she created one section of it i didn't know until relatively recently that this was typical of certain people with brain dysfunction in certain areas no it did not occur to me that that was faking something because Afterwards, when I said, would you repeat this? Would you do it again? That she did a better job on it. And uh, this is still a puzzle to me. And if I had a, the proper consultation, I would have discussed it with neurologists and tried to figure out, because the optic pathway is a very complicated pathway in the brain. It turns upside down. It moves back and forth. And a neurologist is far better equipped to say, this is where things seem to be going wrong. Uh, Did no. you know that she had performed that test before? I, I did not know whether she had or had not. Did you review the state hospital uh, reports, both the competency evaluation and the insanity evaluations, correct? I'm not sure at which point, but I am not aware. I'm not aware of having seen that that was that was kind of my last minute thought. Is there anything I can do uh, that might show me any neurologic uh, dysfunction of any sort? And so I said, "Oh, by the would you please draw a clock for me?" I didn't tell her which hand. I tend to just put something down and then pick it up. And I was staggered at uh, what I saw because it's a specific. Uh, dysfunction is it's it isn't like trying to mess something up it was in part of it and then when I asked her to do it again uh, she did it better and, and doctor I I understand that you want the jury to hear what you have to say but if you can just focus on my question and just answer it okay did you review any prior test that Ms. Stout took with regards to this clock test that you've been talking about? I, d I don't recall seeing another clock test at that time prior to what I had done, no. Okay, if I can just have a second. For the clock test that Dr. Torres did. Yeah, okay. You know, may I retrieve an exhibit? It's people 736. You may. Call it a single speed, if I remember right. <laughs> That's fair. Some shit. Some shit. about that, Dr. Lewis? Um, We've got a couple exhibits in this case. Uh, I also have other clocks here that I had asked you to view. Here are some. 
and I think these were done the same day. So it, it is a puzzle to me, and I don't pretend to, uh, you know, I don't pretend to be an expert on interpreting this, but. Uh, well, let me show you yeah, what it does a yeah. bit, um, yeah. 736, mm -hmm. okay? Do you see there in the top right hand corner? Yes. Picture of a clock? Yeah. Are you yeah. familiar with that? I'm not, I, I, I don't recognize this as having seen this actual page before. Okay. Uh, but it is a clock and, uh, see what she said, draw a clock, 10 past, what is it, 10 past 11? No, it's, uh, it's. She did pretty good on that one, didn't she? Well, yeah, it's not 10 past 11, really, but it's, uh, I have others where she did better with me. And it puzzled me that uh, right, uh, you know, at the time I said, "Would well, do it again and do it again," and uh, and it did improve. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, to, I am puzzled by this phenomenon, and I can't explain it to you except it is unusual that that particular way of drawing it has been found in individuals with severe brain damage, actually. Uh, well, in, in, and, we we're talking about yeah. insanity, doctor. We're talking about the time of the crime, correct? We're talking about uh, brain function at the time of the crime. And, uh, so a test happened. that was taken closer to the time of the crime would be more accurate as to what the brain function was happening at the time of the crime. Is that correct? Not necessarily. So brain functions change over time? Yes. Like change after you plead not guilty by reason of insanity? And before and during. Uh, I mean, it changed there. I was with her. And when she produced this, that was kind of my last fling at seeing, is there any sign of organicity? And then afterwards, when I asked her to repeat it for me right then and there, uh, she did a better job. And then I kind of looked and I marked that she had been using her left hand and then her right hand or vice versa. And uh, sure, it, it varied right then and there. And I can't pretend to tell you exactly why. I think that with the assistance of a neurologist, we could at least have an idea of what, what was blocked off during part of this. And uh, okay, then I'm going to stop you again, yeah. doctor, because we're getting away from what the question was. Okay, uh, on direct examination, you indicated that a bookcase fell on her and she had to go to the hospital and she had a head injury as a result of that. Do you remember saying that yesterday? I remember reading it, yes, and saying it, yes. and that happened close in time to the crime before the crime. I don't remember if it was close in time, it was. A while back, when she was teaching, I, I don't. Colorado, correct? I that I I don't remember where or the date, but you would have to tell me. It's misrepresenting the evidence. She was questioned about bookcase that fell in 2011. So, that's supported by the medical record. It's up to the jury to make a determination regarding whether or not any question or representation by an attorney misrepresents the evidence. The objections overruled. Let me ask you this: You know that she was examined two days after the crime. For head injuries, correct? Uh, I'm not, I can't, I'm not aware of how she was examined or by whom then right after the crime. I would have to look at it to, if I saw it to refresh my memory. Would it be significant to you if you saw that? I would have to see what it said. I, it depends on what it said and how it said it and what they had done. So uh, it could be, it could be. Well, if she was examined by a sane nurse and the sane nurse was feeling her head and examining her head for injuries, would that be significant to you and your determination that she may have a head injury? If it, if it were there, it could be significant. However, uh, you don't necessarily feel on the outside what happened. If you shake something uh, head, there are little hemorrhages that occur in the brain. You would not feel that. When you, if you examine, now sure, if something hits, hits you on the head, you like to feel, because there will be a bump, but uh, 
you can get a far more severe head injury by just doing that. And you, you can actually kill a, an infant, not deliberately, but by shaking the infant. And the, the uh, brain goes back and forth in the, in the cranium, and, uh, and you will get little hemorrhages. And depending on where they are, you will get certain kinds of disorders in the uh, in functioning. And I can't tell you exactly what they are. That's much more in the field of a neurologist. But hey, doctor, let me stop you again. Is it significant to you that a nurse examined the defendant two days after the crime and found no injuries to her head? Is it significant in what way? Meaning that there were no injuries? No. And that's because you could speculate and say she could have had a brain tumor, she could have had hemorrhages because someone was shaking her? Is that what your opinion is? She, she had other uh, injuries previously, so that uh, it's good if the nurse actually did this. I'm not aware, I, I'm not aware of anybody's having felt her head. Maybe they did, I don't know. But... Uh, it's, uh, you know, that does not tell you enough. It's, it tells you if there's a bump, you do know that, that something hit the, uh, hit the skull, the outside of the skull. I'm going to talk about psychosis for a while, okay? Um, in an insanity case, it's real common that psychosis is involved if that person is truly same, correct? Often, yeah. Doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists look for evidence of psychosis at the time of the crime in making those decisions, correct? They look at it over a spectrum, but they do certainly look at it then, and, and they look at a lot of other things besides psychosis. But yes, one of the things that people look at uh, is psychosis. Uh, are the sign, symptoms, behaviors of psychosis. Psychosis is not one little uh, phenomenon. There are many different kinds of psychoses and signs of it, so that uh, it, uh, you're, you're talking about such a broad uh, topic. I'm that talking about them all. Any, any signs of psychosis is important when you're doing a sanity evaluation, correct? Certainly. And a classic example of someone who is truly legally insane would be uh, a father who kills their daughter because they're hearing voices that their daughter is the devil. feel like they have no choice but to kill their own daughter. And so they kill their daughter. Does that sound like something that might fit legal insanity? Uh, it's... It's your concept of one possible type of insanity. Well, what's your concept? Does that seem there are possible? many different concepts. Well, let's just stick to this yeah. hypothetical. Yeah. Does it yes or no? Does it fit your concept of what you feel insanity? As I've said, insanity is many, many different things. And it depends and insanity. You okay to agree with me, Doctor. <laughs> well, no, all that I'm saying to you is you've given one layperson's notion of what insanity is. And, uh, you know, you could have given another story and I would have agreed with it or whatever. Sure, it's a possibility. Okay, uh, I'll take the possibility. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, in that circumstances, they wouldn't know the capacity to appreciate the wrongfulness of their act because they had a psychosis that something was telling them that their daughter was the devil. Follow me? Uh, if you believe that, yes. How do you believe that? In a hypothetical story, I, I believe that you are giving an example of something. No, I don't believe that that happened, but I certainly believe it's one of your, uh, one of your concepts of what uh, what a psychotic episode can be like. And no. I'll buy that that could be one. Sure thing. Okay. I'll take that. I'll give it. <laughs> the other, to add that hypothetical, because the individual didn't appreciate the wrongfulness of his actions, he wouldn't do anything to hide the body. 
He would stand there and say, I did what had to be done. Right? According to your notion of it, uh, not necessarily, but uh, I will buy that this is what you believe it to be. Say, so, no, I'm not going to hide it because it was good. Right afterwards, a person can say, oh, my God, what's, what's happened here? I don't know what this is. I don't know what happened. There are so many permutations sure. and combinations. I would have to say no. It's a, it's a, it's a story. So you would find that person legally sane? Is that what you're saying? No, that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying it takes a whole lot more to uh, assess uh, sanity and its definition. But no, that that's a story that you made up. Actually, I didn't make it up, unfortunately. Um, let me ask you another question about sanity and what you assess. Do you look at a defendant's actions? how the crime was committed, what they did before, during the commission of the crime, and what they did after the crime, and rendered an opinion as to insanity. Uh, I, I do that not simply in terms of rendering an opinion of insanity, uh, but it's a very important part of rendering an opinion of uh, neurologic impairment. For example, it is, uh, it's extremely common to ask particularly if you think that there has been some brain dysfunction. How about before? Before any of this happened, what were you feeling? What were you thinking? How, describe that. Um, how about during? Do you remember everything that happened then? Were you told that you did something you don't remember? Uh, and how about afterwards? How did you feel? Uh, did you have a headache? Did you throw up? Did you, uh, you know, uh, did you feel unwell? Uh, so that before, during, and after is a very, very important sequence, and you would ask it not just in terms of, uh, quote, sanity, but in terms of uh, neurologic impairment and how that affects brain function. Well, you consider anyone who commits murder to have neurological development issues, don't you? I'm sorry, say that again? You consider anyone who commits murder to have neurological issues. I don't recall ever saying that. Uh, did I give you that impression? Better on the HBO documentary. You were saying it there? What did I, what, would you quote this? I'm, I'm not aware of. Well, let me, let me rephrase. Do you think anyone who commits murder has a brain injury? No. Do you think when you're evaluating someone for insanity and you're asking them these questions that you just talked about, what they thought before, during, and after the crime, that would it be important to go back and look at the evidence to see if it's consistent with what they're saying? Any data that you could get that, uh, that, elaborates on what happened is valuable. I can't say how or what, but of course, anything. Uh, you know, even something where weeks before something could have happened. So that, uh, sure, anything that, uh, that you can learn about the act before, during, after, and at any time before, during, after is important. The night before this crime, this murder, on January 26th, 2020, uh, the defendant had a video recording of her and Gannon talking about the fire. You recall seeing that? No. I think that would be important to look at what she's saying the night before the murder. I would. I would have to see it, sir. I can't. I. I need to look at it, and then I'll say yes. I think it is important, or whatever. But yeah, I. No I don't recall it. Not a problem. Um, do we have to, oh, we don't have one. We can't play it. <laughs> Did you not remember looking at that as part of your evaluation? I, I'm sorry, I do not recall exactly that. Also, some of my some of what I saw was unclear, and the sign was not good, so that I can't be certain of that. Well, let me describe it to you and see what your thoughts are. Okay. So she's first of all video recording a conversation she's having with her stepson, who's 11 years old. Saying things like, it's okay, we can sell the couch, not a problem. 
We can sell the pouch and fix it. And Gannon says, I'm just worried about my burns, and he's crying. Then she says, it's okay tomorrow, and then she shuts the video off. Remember seeing anything like that? I, I'm sorry, I don't recall it, but again, uh, much of what I saw was not clear, the sound was not good, and I am not aware of having seen that exactly. Uh, I am aware of having read that uh, that Gannon, uh, that she said, he had little bubbles on his arm. That uh, so that that's the part of what of that I'm assuming it's the same issue. That's that is the part that stayed with me. Well, what about the part of her having the ability to stop the video mm -hmm. after Dan says, I had burns? I'm not sure what that would mean. What, uh, what, would, what would you have me agree to? Well, do you think that would be evidence that she didn't want anyone to know that Gannon had burns? Uh, I can't say. I'm not aware of that because she did say that he had little bubbles on his arm. If she didn't want anyone to know that, I don't know why she would have said that. Okay. 4.36 in the morning, on the morning of January 27, 2020, she sends a text to her employer saying, I can't come in. My stepfather was just killed in an auto accident. Um, you remember that? You talked about it yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Pretty significant to you and your opinions. Yes. Okay. We'll get there in a second. Do you remember the rest of the text, journey? The rest of the text? If you remind me, I can tell you if I remember it. What I don't know what you're referring to. Paraphrase, how's yeah. that? So the boss returns, you know, later in the morning because she's not up at four thirty. She says, "Just let us know what we can do for you. Let me know when you can come in." Words to that effect. Yeah. And then the defendant texts back and says, "I can't believe you can be so inconsiderate. I had a family member just die." Uh, Objective misleading text. I'm paraphrasing. Remember seeing anything like that? I, I remember reading about what to me seemed lackey, if you want, you can call it psychotic, but uh, that made no sense. This man was dead, I think, for eight years. And to call in and say, she clearly was not thinking clearly or uh, cogently or accurately. And she gave, it was one of these ridiculous kinds of excuses that a person of her intellect would not be expected to uh, to volunteer. There's a, a, you know, you'd almost say a stupidity about it, but she's, she's in stupid. Uh, there's, uh, well, there's something again, let me, let me wrong stop you, doctor. with how she's um, describing this. Could it be that this didn't want to go to work that day? Could that just be out of the realm of possibility? Unlikely, but possible. Any. And she had other things to do that day? She didn't want to go to work? I think it's unlikely. And you also know that her stepfather actually died in 2004, correct? I know he died for uh, eight years, I believe, prior to this. Well, let's do I'll, the math. I'll go by your math. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, she was also able to call in to Gannon school and say, Gannon's not going to be coming into school that day either. You seeing that? Absolutely. Nothing psychotic about that. At the time that I read that, became aware of it, I was puzzled because I thought, gee, then he must have been dead then. Why is she calling in? And uh, it really did not make a lot of sense to me. To be calling in, to be calling in one person who died eight years ago was having a funeral that day, and uh, and Gannon couldn't go to school. But I learned subsequently that he is reportedly uh, dead a lot later than that. So that uh, it's a puzzle why she called in to say he couldn't come in. It had nothing to do with maybe planning. And what she's yeah, going to be doing I don't know. It could have had to do with planning. Okay.
And then you know that she also sent a text to her husband, Al Stout, saying, hey, don't let school know that Gannon's not coming in today. He said he had some stomach issues the day before. For that one? No. The stepfather, you said that was psychotic or evidence of psychosis. I, I don't know what that, what you're referring to, sir. Could the you? that she called in the school and saying my stepfather just died. I, I think it's a peculiar, it's bizarre. I, I'm not sure what that was all about, what she was thinking, why she did that. It doesn't make sense. It's a bit of a leap to call it psychosis right now, but it's, uh, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense. Does it make sense that she may circle back to that at a time where she wants people to feel that she's mentally ill, blame it on her stepfather because it's on record that she's already talked about her stepfather dying? Does that make sense at all to you? Doesn't make sense to me, no. And then the morning of the 27th at approximately 8.14 a.m. and then again at 8.16 a.m., she takes pictures of Gannon in bed and sends them to her husband, Al Stout. Do you remember seeing that? I don't recall seeing. No. Not unusual behavior. I beg your pardon. Is that unusual behavior? Taking a picture of a child sleeping in his bed? I, it's behavior. I don't know what kind of behavior. Do you think she might have been taking pictures to show that Gannon was still alive that morning? She might have been. And then uh, you talk about it with her in the interview, and you know from reading the police reports that they, her and Gannon leave the house about 10, 20 in the morning. They go to Petco. Remember that part? Uh, yeah, in part. Yeah. And they take Al Stout's red Nissan truck. Remember that? I don't recall it was a red Nissan truck, but I, I recall it was a truck that uh, actually I thought it was her truck. Could have been his. And you can actually see Gannon walking to the back left passenger side rear, rear left door of the truck and get in. Remember seeing that video? I, I don't recall seeing it, but... Uh, I, you know, I may have read other people saw it. I, uh, I just don't have a clear memory of that particular film. Now, in the video, you can see the clothing that Gannon's wearing. You see uh, uh, sweats with a white stripe going down them. You remember seeing that? As I told you, I, I don't remember seeing that particular thing. But again, the equipment I had was not clear and... Uh, there was no one there with me to say, this is what we're seeing now. So that, uh, but I, I don't question this, that there was that, that there's, uh, it's peculiar that uh, here he is walking around. And if I understand correctly, she had already called the school and said that he could not come in. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's yeah. homesick. She's home because she's telling people that her stepfather died and they decide to go shopping. Playing hooky. <laughs> oh, uh, was that uh, buying cat toys? Was it? I forget something like that. Needless to say, Gannon's wearing the same clothes that he was found in under a bridge on March seventeenth, twenty twenty. They leave that morning. I I believe you. Now, at the time that she drives that truck around and goes to Petco. Does she have the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't know. I, that, that's a leap where, you know, if you can't talk to the person and you don't see more. I, I don't know. You talked to her. Did you ask her that? I don't recall asking specifically, did you know right from wrong at, the, at this point? I, I don't know. And I don't know the answer to that. Would it be a stretch to say she did know right from wrong? The fact that she was able to go to Petco, run errands, and come back later that afternoon with no tickets, no accidents. That she knew right from wrong then? Sure. I don't know. I would think, having called into school, 
and having said uh, that this child can't come in, and then taking him on a on, on a field trip to Petco, uh, that she really did not have a good idea of what she was doing or why she was doing it. Oh. And I, I'm not sure that the idea of right from wrong is applicable to this just particular episode. It, well, it's wacky, but it's... Uh, she legally insane at the time she's driving the Petco again. I don't know. I think you would have to, you know, I, I would have to know a whole lot more. If you don't know a lot more, can you come in here and say that she was legally insane based on her driving the Petco again in that day? I cannot, I can't say because I don't know enough about it. They get back about 2.20 p.m. and there's video of them coming back. Do you remember seeing that? Again, I, I remember knowing about it, what I saw and what I remember reading. I can't distinguish the two, but I do recall that, uh, I believe it was at two, that there was a return. And we see a leg drop on the right rear passenger door right about the time that the driver's door opened. Do you remember seeing that? No. Well, she tells you that they both come home together, right, when she's talking to you? I'll buy that. Sure. Do you not remember that? Again, I don't remember word for word when she told me these things. And also, since I read other people's accounts of them, uh, I can't tell you exactly where a piece of information came from. Anything about the video about them coming back at 2.20 p.m. that would lead you to believe that she didn't have the capacity to know right from wrong? I, it's a tough one to say right from wrong versus that she didn't know what on earth she was doing. And, and I'm just asking did. if she had the capacity, if she was able to know right from wrong. I, I don't know that. You know from the video that they sit in the truck for approximately 30 seconds as the truck is there before the doors open? No. Is it unconceivable that they might have been talking to each other? No, or not. Or arguing with each other? Or not. The autopsy report. You've read that, right? Right. The autopsy report tells you a lot about how the killing took place, does it not? I think so. And the autopsy report tells you that there was at least 18 cut wounds and stab wounds. Right. And a lot of those were defensive wounds on Gannon? Some, yeah. Some on his hands. He was fighting back, right? <clears throat> as far as we know, yes. Yeah. Is there indication that whoever did that had the capacity to form the intent to kill? I, I don't know. I would think so. I would think so. Just based on the stab wounds alone, right? Well, it certainly had that quality of, you know, as I thought about it, whether there was an automatic quality to it, which is partly why I wanted certain neurologic tests done, uh, because there was a repetition, as I recall. And, but there was, uh, there were signs on his hands of cut, of cut marks. So they're fighting back, right? Looks that way to me. And the location of the stab wounds, three in the chest, one in the head, several in the back and arms that we already kind of talked mm -hmm. about. Does that indicate to you that whoever did this had the capacity to form the intent to kill? That, that's a stretch for me because uh, when individuals keep doing this kind of act over and over and over again uh it it can be an attempt to kill but uh it can also be a repetitious kind of automatic act and uh not having been there and uh i i don't know what what the state of mind was whether there was an kind of an automatic going about this 
or whether there was a real, gee, I haven't killed him now, I'd like to kill him. Well, that, me, I don't know. Let so, me have you take off your psychiatrist hat for just a second and just use good old common sense. Based on the stab wounds alone, whoever commit this crime had the capacity to form the intent to kill. I, I cannot answer that for this, the reason that I've just told you, that I don't know whether the person was automatically doing something which with certain types of complex partial seizures uh, occur, where a person just keeps, they may do something not at all violent, they may button and unbutton their coat, they may turn a light on and off and just keep doing it, and they may just keep doing that, or they may say, not dead yet, I want to kill them, so that I don't know for sure what was going on in the uh, head of of the person doing this. Okay, I well, let, let's say there are two possibilities. There are at least two possibilities. Let's move on from the stab wound. Yeah. The fact that there was blunt force trauma, i.e., some sort of object was used, caused four head injuries, one of which crushing Gannon's skull, causing skull fractures. Right. The fact that another instrument was retrieved and used <clears throat> lead to the opinion that whoever did this had the capacity to form judgment and reflection and also had the capacity to form the intent to kill. I, I think you could interpret it that way, or you could say the person felt threatened, felt endangered. By the way, I did not understand where that came from or how, with all of those stab wounds, where this item came from. Perhaps I missed something in the report. Oh, but, well, um, well, let me stop you right there, because in your uh, report, you said you thought it may have been a baseball bat. Remember writing that in your report? I, I'm sorry, I don't recall that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it could have been uh, a fear that the person himself or herself was being threatened and that uh, the wish was to uh, get rid of this threatening murderous object. I don't know what was going through her head. What about the blunt force injuries to her uh, Gannon's head, the four themselves? I don't, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a good understanding of the object or of that particular aspect of the injury. So I've- Why does the object I matter? I don't know. I would it's, have to know. The point is mm -hmm. they decided to move from a knife and go to another object, continue on with the killing, correct? I, I'm not correct. I, I'm, I don't know what came first or what came second. And I'm not sure how, how when you're stabbing someone, you get around to hit them on the back of the head. Uh, it's uh, it puzzled me, and uh, and I I still don't know what what was going on at the time or in the person's head. For all you know, the person could have felt threatened and felt that something was uh, of danger to her. I don't know what was going through her head at the time. Well, there's an 11 year old boy who has 18 stab wounds lying in his bed. Right. And then she takes an object and crushes his skull. Does that indicate that he's fighting back at that point? I'm sorry, I don't know enough about the. Did you look at the crime scene pictures? I looked at the, I looked particularly at the autopsy. I remember I'm not, uh, I'm not as clear of, of of the crime scene pictures, except for the spatters of blood and and this sort of thing. But uh, I don't know what was going through her mind when this was happening. Was she defending herself? Was she attempting to kill him? The puzzle is all other data say that she loved him and that he uh, apparently he loved her. And loved him quite a bit, didn't she? The next thing she does, is she gets another object, gun. The fact that she gets a gun, does that tell you she has the capacity to use it and reflection? It's the capacity to form the intent to kill. I don't know, sir. I, when I spoke with her, she, her memory was, 
I could see a gun in my hand. And I, I do not know what was going through her head or why there was a gun or why she shot, uh, why she shot this. Uh, it would be a leap for me to, to speculate on this. Uh, I, it is not clear that, that she simply wanted to kill this. This is a child she loved. As If we believe what other people said, she loved Gannon. So that uh, it's... And so it's, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. I don't know that she wished to kill him. I don't know that it was even he that she wished to kill. Clearly, she did kill him. But we don't know whether uh, at the time she saw Gannon and she was trying to kill Gannon. We don't know. So her actions mean nothing to you with regards to... I think to that's a leap. Her actions mean nothing to me. No. Uh, well, everything's a leap to you. I, I, I just want to know what that means to you, the fact that she used three separate instruments to kill Gannon. Did she have the ability to make decisions when she did that? And I'm, uh, what I'm saying is I can't be certain what was going on in her head because I, I pondered it and I thought, what on earth... How, how did she get this, whatever the blunt instrument was? Uh, when did it happen? And then when I think more than one person said that she loved this child, so that uh, it certainly made me wonder whether she was misperceiving something there. And uh, Well, then let's, let's go forward then, because what does she do after she does all that? She drags his body to the storage room and stuffs it in a large green suitcase. She had the capacity to know right from wrong when she did that. Uh, it would certainly seem she knew that this was something that uh, should not have happened. And does that corroborate the actual killing, that she had the capacity to form an intent to kill, the capacity to use judgment and reflection, the fact that she immediately stuffs his body in a suitcase afterwards? I, again, I don't know for sure. But, what about uh, cleaning up the crime scene? After he stuff, she stuffs his body in a suitcase, she goes back to the room and cleans all the blood off the wall. Not all of it. That have the, does she have the capacity to know right from wrong when she's cleaning in his bedroom? She certainly uh, believes that other people will believe that she had done something horrendous or something terrible had happened. Uh, that's, I guess, as far as I can go right, right now. Now, she then goes back to the storage room and throws a bunch of boxes on a green suitcase in the storage room. You seen pictures of that? I, again, I've seen a lot, so that uh, I don't recall those particular pictures. And then the police come about 10.09 that evening, January 27th, and they search the entire house. And her demeanor is calm, cool, and collected. And went to some friend's house, didn't come home. Makes those statements with her demeanor like that. Is that evidence that she had the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't think that... <clears throat> I don't think that's evidence that she knew right from wrong. Uh, we don't even know whether she knew what she had done. We, uh, I, I, again, I, I don't think that that's evidence she knew right from wrong. What about, it, is it evidence of psychosis? It certainly it sounds out of touch with reality. When someone's in a psychotic state, it's pretty obvious, right? No. Looking around. Wrong. No, no, sorry. That's television. No. Okay. <laughs> so someone in a psychotic state can act normal and have a normal conversation with a police officer when their stepson is in the storage room underneath a bunch mm -hmm. of boxes in a suitcase? Particularly if the person does not know that she has done that or that this is what, <clears throat> what the status is. That you know, we don't we don't know what, but there's something really odd about being in that a very calm sort of state. Here she has reportedly murdered a child she loved. This makes no sense. This this is psychotic. Uh, 
Well, did this, she kill that boy? Did she think she'd killed him? Uh, was it that boy? Did she remember what had happened? Uh, well, let's talk about the next day then, if she remembered. Because the next day, at 6.20 in the morning, she drives her Tiguan out of the garage and is gone for 10 minutes, and it comes back. Remember that? I, I don't remember that specifically. here. And then later that morning, at 8.30, she goes to pick up Al, her husband, at the airport. Remember that? Yes. For Young, could you find a reasonable breaking point in the next five minutes or so? Sure, I can, Young. When she leaves at 6.22 a.m., I think she might be looking to see if anybody's watching. That's a speculation. I don't know. Because when she leaves at 8.30, <laughs> do you know who's in the car with her? I'm assuming that, uh, that the body is in the car. Is that what you're referring to? Absolutely. The body that you just said that she may have forgot about. She didn't remember killing him, put him in the suitcase, hide him in the storage room. That yes, gets I, the body out of the storage room, takes it upstairs, puts it in the back of the T1, drives to the airport. Sound familiar? Is that a question? Uh, yeah. At the time she does that, does she have the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't know because it is approximately then when she thinks that at least what she says to some people is she thinks that she can bring this body back to life. And she says that she brings him or tries to get him a hamburger. That ought to do it. And, uh, and then she, I believe she even tries to get him ice cream. This, this is psychotic thinking. This is. Oh, that's what she's saying. What actually happened is she drove directly to the airport, parked the Tiguan, left Gannon's body in the back of the Tiguan, rented another car, and now her went home. That's what happened. Yeah. What she's saying is psychotic because she wants you to think it's psychotic, correct? I can't say that's correct. I can say you believe that's correct. Okay. You know, it's a good time to stop. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our morning recess. If I can have everyone back in the dreary room at, say, uh, 1040. We should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, and we will see you back at uh, 1040. All rise for the jury, please. Yeah. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Court will be in recess until 1040. All rise.
Okay, before we uh, start back into the case, there's two things that um, I need to address uh, that have come to my attention. Uh, one is um, I've issued uh, general orders regarding um, usage of uh, cell phones, uh, video cameras, all of that stuff. What we have provided uh, for the uh, general public is that um, they can uh, capture what is being broadcast uh, as a webinar. Uh, they can rebroadcast uh, that, and that's fine. Everyone here needs to understand, everyone in this courtroom is prohibited at any point in time from audio or video recording any part of this proceeding in the courtroom. Don't have your phones out. There's not a reason for it. There are press that are here uh, that uh, may be part of pool press. They may be part of uh, some other uh, commercial entity uh, for press, and that's fine. But even they are not recording any part of this proceeding. If that happens, it could be, number one, your phone gets confiscated. It could be, number two, you face direct contempt uh, proceedings with me. Don't do it. Second issue is, um, I know that we have uh, some uh, people from out of town. I know that we have some people uh, from out of state. Um, and I know that uh, perhaps they're not familiar with uh, the laws in the state of Colorado or the uh, etiquette and procedures for this courtroom and this building. This entire building, the El Paso County Combined Courts, in its entirety, is a non-smoking facility. Also understand, we have cameras everywhere in the building. So when you leave this courtroom and you go down a hallway, uh, and then you go into a stairwell, uh, and you're smoking, we know who it is. Especially if you've been warned about it before, and you go down to a, uh, another stairwell and smoke. I want to be very clear, there is no smoking of either tobacco or marijuana products anywhere in the courthouse at any point in time. Anybody who uh, is here that um, I learn continues to do that, uh, I may bar from the courthouse uh, pending the outcome of this trial. So. Two things, no phones, no smoking. Let me ask, anybody in the gallery have any questions about that? Raise your hand. No response. All right. I'll take that as everybody that's in the courtroom understands my message clearly, um, and I don't have to take any further action regarding it. Is there anything else that we need to take up outside the presence of the jury? Oh, Prosecution? Yeah. No. Defense? No, sir. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring the jury back in. All rise for the jury, please.
May all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stalk. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. When we took our break, we were in the midst of cross examination. That's where we will resume. <laughs> Thanks, Judge. Uh, Dr. Lewis, we left off with uh, the Tiguan being at the airport. You can call that this morning. Now, the fact that she moves the body from the storage room to the Tiguan and then to the airport. Is that an indication that she has the capacity to know right from wrong? I don't feel qualified to say, to conclude that she, she certainly had the capacity to move it from one place to another for one reason or another. Uh, and certainly it would seem to be for keeping, keeping it a secret of some sort. Uh, whether or not she thought this was right or wrong, I, I just can't speculate. Well, she knew that Al was coming home because she was picking him up. Correct? As far as I know, yes. And she knew that she had to move the body before Al got home, correct? Perhaps. The, the body was hidden, so it could have been hidden somewhere else, yeah. And she knew she had to rent another vehicle because Gannon's body was in her Tiguan, correct? We, I know she rented another one and it was in the Tiguan, yes. She thought this out, right? Yes. Rational thinking? That, that's a leap. Thinking, yes. Okay. Is she psychotic when she's making these decisions to rent a car and leave the body in the Tiguan at the airport? Again, speculation, I, uh, I don't know. We're now into January 28th, 2020. Um, Al and her go home in the rental car, the Kia. Do you remember reading about that? Yes. And then about 4 p.m. that day, she leaves in the rental car and goes back to the airport. Do you remember seeing that? <clears throat> Reading about it, perhaps, yeah. Is it inconceivable that she's going back to check on the Tiguan to make sure no one's disturbed it? Any, any speculation is possible. Is that rational thinking under the circumstances? Don't know. If the body's in your car, do you want to make sure no one's messed with it? Bodies in your car, you might want to avoid going anywhere near that car so that you're not involved with it. So that I think it, it would be speculating to say this is why or that's why. I don't, you know, we don't okay. know why. That's fair. Uh, but we do know that she goes back to the airport once again on the 28th at 7 p.m. Correct? You remember that? I believe you. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't remember the numbers or the, the times. But... Uh, Certainly seems likely. She leaves the white rental car, the Kia, in short-term parking, keeps the keys to that car, and leaves the airport in the Tiguan. Is that rational thought processes under the circumstances? I have no idea why it, she's doing that. I can't say it's rational, irrational. It, she did it. It, it would be speculation <laughs> without finding out more. Well, is it evidence that she had the capacity to know right from wrong collecting Gannon's body that way? No. She takes the Tiguan and leaves, puts her phone on airplane mode, and drives for several hours. And we're mapping her on her Life360 app. Do you remember seeing that? No, I recall hearing, becoming aware of it in one way or another, seeing or uh, reading about it. Go ahead. And as she's doing this, she's texting her daughter, Harley, don't open the door, don't talk to the police, that kind of thing. Is that evidence that she has the capacity to know right from wrong? Again, it, it suggests that she has the capacity to know that, uh, that she could be in great trouble if uh, if this were not hidden. You know, knowing right from wrong is such an abstract 
uh, it's it's hard to comment on that. Certainly, if she would have stayed with Gannon's body in his bedroom, that might be some good evidence that she didn't have the capacity to know right from. Didn't think it was wrong to kill him, right? Again, uh, that's that's one interpretation. <clears throat> and of course, that didn't happen here, correct? That she stayed with him, right? She did not stay with. Him. Because what she does is she eventually drives her Tiguan up to Palmer Lake, which is a small town north of Colorado Springs. If you're not familiar with it. She finds an isolated spot. Drop the suitcase off on the side of the road. That evidence that she had the capacity to know right from wrong and trying to hide the body again. Again, she... Uh, she had the capacity to know that she needed to hide the body. I don't know. I can't uh, move on to yes, she knew right from wrong. That's that again. It's an abstraction, and uh, I do, I can't comment on knowing right from wrong simply from that. Is that evidence that she's suffering some kind of psychosis? The fact that she goes to an isolated spot. To hide the body. Maybe. Don't know. Is it also evidence that she may not be suffering from psychosis? The fact that she knows to go to an isolated spot and hide the body. Maybe. During this whole time, she's texting with Harley and still controlling what Harley's actions are. Do you remember seeing that? You would have to remind me. She's multitasking. She's kind of controlling what's happening at her house, as well as getting rid of the body. Uh, I'm sorry, I've, I have not just proposed that, but uh, if, if you clarify what she was saying to Harley, perhaps I can say something. But don't talk to the cops. Don't talk to the police, that kind of stuff. Don't let them in the house. You consider that to be a form of manipulation? Certainly, uh, a form of trying to control what uh, what happens around midnight between the twenty eighth and the twenty ninth of January, twenty twenty. Uh, she meets Harley close to Harley's place of employment. Remember reading about that? Not specifically, but. Uh, and she leaves her Tiguan there. Harley then takes her back home in her car. The fact that she's thinking about leaving the Tiguan somewhere other than her own home, is that evidence that she has the capacity to know right from wrong? Again, it shows the capacity to know what will be regarded as incriminating or uh, not in her best interest. I, again, right from wrong is abstract, and I, I hesitate to comment on that specifically. Well, I'll ask you this then. Did she know the fact that if there is blood in that Tiguan, it might be incriminating to her? I would think so, yes. The next morning, her daughter Harley gives her a ride back to the airport where she takes the keys that she still has for the rental car, the Kia, that she left in short-term parking the day before. And she tosses the keys to an Avis representative out on the sidewalk at the airport. That evidence that she has the capacity to hide the fact that she is no longer in that rental car and was in the Tiguan the night. I don't know. Her daughter Harley then gives her a ride back to where her Tiguan is, where it was at all night by her place of employment. Uh, massage envy, he didn't know. Okay. And she then is talking to detectives at the El Paso County Sheriff's Office and saying, I'm on my way. I want to come down and interview you. <clears throat> Remember that evidence? Uh, again, I've 
probably read it, but I don't specifically remember that, but I'll certainly believe you. And she drives the Tiguan to the sh uh, sheriff's office, which is right across the street from the courthouse. And on her way, she stops and washes the Tiguan. Ever reading about that? Not specifically, but again, uh, you know, certainly I could have it. I just don't re remember specific. At that point, does she have the capacity to destroy incriminating evidence by washing the teeth? Yes. When she gets to the sheriff's office, she's interviewed. And this is what the, the story that you alluded to yesterday about Eduardo and the rape happening. You remember that story? That I remember. Jerry probably remembers it too. We're not going to get into the whole interview. But I do want to talk about a couple things that she says in that interview, okay? Uh, in that interview, she alludes to the fact that Eduardo took a suitcase. Remember that portion of the interview? You'd have to continue on. I... Kind of weird, isn't it? You're, you're describing being raped, your stepson's kidnapped, and by the way, the kidnapper took a suitcase. It's blacky. It's, it is it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. Do you think it might be an indication that she knew that Gannon's body was in a suitcase out in Palmer Lake at that time, and if someone was to find the body, she had an explanation as to how the body got there? Could be. Pretty rational thinking, isn't it, on the circumstances? I don't think much of what she was thinking was rational, sir. So that, uh, again, that's a... a what about Please. smart? Was that smart to tell the officers that? Again, uh, that's a judgment call. Uh, the whole thing is so con convoluted and wacky that uh, to call it smart doesn't quite hit the mark. The other crazy thing that she says is, after he raped me and kidnapped Gannon, he just leaves the gun at the house and then leaves. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. It, it, that is crazy. It, yeah. But is it really crazy? Because she knows the gun is still in the house, and that's the gun that she used, and she has to have an explanation on why that gun was used. I don't know if it was really crazy. It sounds crazy to me. Or really smart, right? Not to me, but... Setting up the story. Again, you're you're thinking more logically, I think, than uh, than we can give her credit for through much of this. Uh, but I, you know, I find crazy what you find uh, logical. It's crazy when people kill their kill kids. Is it's that crazy when you say Eduardo comes and rapes her and takes off uh, Gannon. It's the whole concept is crazy. It, uh, you know, if a little bit of it is uh, seems logical that a gun was here or there, the whole the whole story of Eduardo is crazy. Yeah, that's why she changed it later on and came up with Quincy Brown and some other stories, right? I don't know why. I uh, because she realized it was crazy and then changed it. Yeah, less crazy. People who are pathological liars. They, when they lie, they tend to have small crumbles of the truth in it, and they have no problem changing that lie to something else. Isn't that true? This is what your understanding is of a pathological liar. I, I can't, you know, I can't ascribe to that or not. This is what you believe. A well, what do you believe? Liar. You've interviewed uh, hundreds of people on death row. Have you ever come across any of those individuals who may have not been honest with you? Oh, yes, from time to time, sure. That may have been, uh, have antisocial personality disorder? Oh, may have. Where they're manipulators, they're pathological liars, they have no sympathy? I, this is a, a bit of a fantasy and... Uh, I don't know what's a fantasy about. I'm just asking you, have you ever come across anybody like that? Exactly like that. I would say no. Never come across anyone 
with antisocial personality disorders? Uh, certainly, I've, I've come across many people who have been so diagnosed. And those are some of the criteria of antisocial personality disorder, are, are they not? There are some of them. Jump forward to January 31st, 2020, okay? Her family now has come to Colorado. Um, her aunt uh, has rented a Nissan Altima from Denver and drove it down to Colorado Springs. Remember reading about that? No. <laughs> Not too, nothing crazy about that, right? Don't know the Altima. But... That Altima, at some point on January 31st, a tracking device is placed on it. A GPS tracking device. You remember reading about that? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And then her family, including her daughter, her brother, uh, indicate that Ms. Stop disappears for two hours that afternoon, January 31st, 2020, in the Nissan Altima. Remember where she goes? You'd have to remind me, no. She goes right back to that same spot in Palmer Lake where the body is. Is that evidence that she has a capacity to know right from wrong when she goes back to collect Gannon's body? In my opinion, that's evidence of stupidity. If you want to, if you want to cover up something that you've done, you don't drive back to the body. You just don't do that. But you she did. Yeah, it's not too smart and not too well thought out, but she did. Is it not conceivable that I didn't hide the body good enough? I need to go get it. I'm driving to Florida, be better off in the Gulf of Mexico than where it was at. Is that inconceivable? You've just conceived it so that clearly you've thought about it. I don't think it's the smartest thing to do or the best way to hide your implication in a, in a death to drive back to where the body has been placed. I'm not smart. Probably a panicky thing to do, right? Criminals aren't the smartest people. Necessarily panicky, not smart. And we know what happens after that, right? She rents a van, and her and Harley take Gannon's body in the back of that van and drive to Pensacola, Florida. You surely you know about that. If this is when she drives with her, with her right. daughter. Right. Uh -huh. That's something you remember from reading in the police reports? From perhaps numerous source, you know, sources. Along the way, Ms. Stauk is able to rent hotel rooms. She's able to deceive the people at the hotel. So she works for the Ford Motor Company. We only need one room, one person, no pets. What else? Remember reading about that? Not specifically. The whole trip to Florida, do you see any evidence of psychosis? or any evidence that she didn't have the capacity to know right from wrong during that trip? I have to say I, I see neither the capacity nor a lack of capacity there. It's, uh, it's to my mind, it's incredibly peculiar behavior to, to drive that distance at, with a body and the body of a child that you allegedly loved uh, in the back of your car. There is a... Uh, I'm glad you used the word allegedly there because you're familiar with a uh, search that she did on her phone that was later deleted by her that says, I don't like my stepson. Remember that search? I, uh, I'm aware of the statement, I don't like my stepson. Kind of contradicts what you've I been saying though. Uh, I think I only became aware of that once, but it could have happened again. I don't know. So... She takes Gannon's body and dumps it over a bridge in Pensacola. That evidence that she has the capacity to know right from wrong, and she once again is hiding Gannon's body. Again, I don't know if that shows she knows right from wrong. And then his body was discovered on March 17, 2020, by a Macon Ponder. Do you remember reading about that? I remember reading that it was found. Bridge inspector who inspects that bridge every two years just happened to be there on March 17, 2020, and he finds the suitcase. Okay. Yeah. If that suitcase is never found, do you think we'd be here today on an insanity case? 
I, I can't answer that. I, I don't know. I want to talk about the interview that you had with her, the forensic interview that took place over a period of three days in November, okay? I'm going to play some clips of those interviews with you. Um, but before I do that, going into this interview, do you have any concerns that Ms. Stout may not be truthful with you during the interview? Of course. Skepticism, right, that we talked about yesterday? Of course. And so with that, Your Honor, um, and some of these clips are shorter than others. Uh, I know you may be more comfortable sitting there, but if, if you want to get in your wheelchair and go somewhere else, we can do that. Uh, wherever I could see it more clearly, because I, d I have not seen it as clearly or heard it as clearly as, as I would like. If, if there's a better spot, that would there's be a good. TV right behind you. And then the, the, the other TV is here. So you can work out whatever you want to do, doctor. I mean, Let me figure it out. You tell me, and then we'll yeah. we'll start when you're ready. Uh, we're going to go. Uh, I wonder, here. can we move this back a little? And can we see? Can I hear this clearly? You're going to be able to. You're going to be able to hear it clearly. We could also get you in a wheelchair and put you. I, um, right here, so that would be easier. Uh. Well, let's. Why don't we try it? If it's okay. if it isn't clear, we can pause and go. And yeah, let's. Yeah. Well, here's the deal, doctor. I'm going to ask you some questions after the clips, okay? Uh, and so, this one's I think only about five minutes long. I'm going to try it from sitting there and see how it works out, and then we can go to Plan B if we have to. Well, yeah, we certainly could. What I would like to do is. Uh, grab a pad or something so that uh, if something strikes me that I see, I can jot it down and recall it. No uh, problem. And I, I can do we have a pad or something, yeah. While you're, oh, when you come back, it's okay. When you come back, if you turn, if you hit both of the green buttons so the perimeter lights are out, it may help her see a little bit better. Okay. That? Yeah, and the other one. Yep. There you go. And so for the record, we're going to start with People's Exhibit 729, which is an interview that took place on November 15th, 2022, in the morning time. And before we hit play, doctor, uh, we have a freeze frame here of the video. Um, obviously, is of that, the what? It's, it's just the video's pause so we yep. can see the image. Uh, do you see Ms. Stout there in the center of the video? Yes. Um, who are the other two people behind her? I see Caitlin, and uh, I see the foot. I assume it is of Josh. Is that? I'm not sure. Is that Mr. Tony? Yes. Now, you're, are you seated where Miss Stout is looking right now? I think that you can see. I'm not positive. I think those are probably my papers, and so I would have been seated across from her looking at her and where they could have been in my peripheral vision. So we're going to start the video at 11 minutes and 5 seconds, and we're going to stop it at 15 minutes and 41 seconds. Can I try to fix this seat so that I can see what's going on? It doesn't move. You'd have to adjust your... Yeah, I'm just trying to turn it. Your... Oh, okay. It will turn all the way around. There you go. Okay. We're going to hit play then. Uh, what did she call you? I don't necessarily call her names, but like, I'll make like, a mistake when you talk to like, when you call her. So, like, no, I mean, for example, the mystery of the meeting or the job. I don't know, Josh. You call the job. Yeah. Do all of you call? Yeah. 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 Like Maria called me. <laughs> no, like Maria sometimes calls him Ben. She gets called him B A D J O. Like a bad would be like said Spanish for asshole, but like, that's the only she gets mad at. But they know it's asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but really? Well, he's not really an asshole, but <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. No, no. 
I know that my friend said she's talking Russian to her. But, uh, when he said he told her. And you're, you're not aware of any Russian kind of aspect of you. I know I've been to like a lot of countries and ended up there and I've had to adapt to them and I know that I've been able to talk to people there. What's so, that? I saw a lot of people what they're telling me. Yeah. I've been to yeah. I've been to all the islands of all the Caribbean islands. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I need to sit back further and yes, uh, it's too hard to see her from here. Can we move by? Perhaps I can just move the wheelchair over there and look sure. up here. I can help yes. you. Yeah, it's, we pause it at 1311. <laughs> Let's see what. See, see what we can do here. Yeah. And if, if we just move that around there, maybe. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Yeah. Okay. You want to sit back? Uh, let, let me see if uh, if I can see and hear. But I, this looks a whole lot better. That looks better? Yeah, let's see. Let's see okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I think, I think this is better. Okay, that's fine. You'll just need to, if you're going to be asking any questions or give any answers from there, you'll just need to speak up so everybody can hear you because the microphone's not there and there are jurors behind you. And it may be easier, like when there's a question, then I'll just okay. turn her that way. Okay, that. Mr. Young. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. We'll go ahead and resume the video at uh, 1311. Date of this just so I have it. November 15, 2022, in the morning. Okay, here we go. Jesus, Princess, she's a princess, she wants to divide. Is she a princess? She wants to divide. She's not a part of you, or she is. And so, she has to be a part of you. She's risky, like, she doesn't want to ask for. Like, very very lucky. What do you call? Like, we're seeing. Uh, yeah, like, I'm gonna say, uh, like, go get me in trouble. Yeah. So that's Can't go out. I party a lot. Yeah. I'm not a part of it. You're not a part of it. So, I would suggest I'm getting the picture. So, like, what happened is something really happened, happened to her that, like, really stressed out. I'm just, I can be at, like, work and be okay, and something stressful will happen, and then I'll just end up right somewhere. No, end up in play. Do you know how you got to play? It's like my body goes through the motions. Like, obviously, I got a kid. I need a passport by taking it from yeah. that. I don't really remember doing all of it. You don't remember it all. I know it sounds crazy. But no, it does not. But, like, okay, so, like, if you see my credit card, it's like me. And you're like, oh, okay. Obviously, she did it because obviously it's under her. My name is easy to end. My body's got to know that's who's a credit card and you to be able to pay for it. But yet, at the same time, like, I won't know I've done it, so I'm on the plane. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to this place or I'm going to that place. You so find yourself somewhere. Not being on the plane. I did it a lot. You can send me tests. Like, just drink wine. I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was fine. Uh -huh. Simple things like that. I'll be able to. 
being in another country. I met that a lot where my daughter's in Texas and I'm like, Mom, it says you're in the middle of the ocean. And I'm like, oh, I am. Because I heard him. One time I was in Jamaica. I was sitting over there. Fine. I got a plane to go to Jamaica, but I was also at work at a party and I'm meeting with me. We want to get to know what. Let's see. Maybe Josh can go to the party. Hey, we stopped it at 1544. Okay. I was going to say I'm more than happy to help out. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I did not get all of her words there, so. I'll, if, if the question I ask you, if you want to have us replay something, we can do that, okay? Or perhaps if someone could reread it and. Uh, I'll do my best to paraphrase. How's that? Right. Okay. Um, in the beginning, you asked the question about how she refers to her attorney, Josh. You remember asking that? Uh, the question you ask is, do all of you call him Josh? Do you remember asking that question? Yeah. Why did you ask it that way? I think it's something interesting that where, uh, where she had talked about other, and that was, I did not make that up myself, but it came from other, entities of some sort. I, I don't recall the earlier part, but I knowing myself, I know I, I wouldn't introduce it, it would have been something. And I guess, yeah, can the jury hear okay, Your Honor? I just want to make sure. Looks like it. Okay, great. We're getting thumbs up. It's all good. She talked about um, Maria having a jail call and speaking Russian. Remember that? There was something there about the Russian, yeah. Did you ever see a jail call where the defendant was speaking Russian? I don't recall a jail call, so I don't. That would be something important to you, would it not? If she's saying that, and then lo and behold, there is a jail call where she's speaking Russian, that could corroborate what she's saying, right? Well, it could. I, I have to see it kind of in a bigger picture because I remember different things. Uh, it had, in retrospect, but it has special meaning because much later, I believe, in my interview, uh, she starts to speak in what sounds like a Russian accent. And Dr. Lewis, we're going to play that. Well, we're, we're we're gonna... is here, this is the first time I'm aware that she, I did not recall that she had mentioned the Russian point. But <laughs> it's, uh, some kind of entity that sounds like and we'll talk about that more when we get that portion of the video we're going to we're going to play that portion where she's speaking in an accent okay and one other issue here was and that puzzled me but i didn't pause there was when she said part of her i thought it might have been maria spoke spanish and so i kind of caught my ear from my I too did anybody speak Spanish? I don't know whether any speak it or whether this is part of the videos that sounds speak Spanish. And there's nothing in the record whatsoever, including the records that were given to you by the defense, that indicates the defendant has ever spoken to anyone in Spanish. As far as I could determine, but I sure wanted to, to know. Yeah, sure. It's possible. Yep. She tells you that she's been to Dubai as Jasmine, and Jasmine's a princess. Remember that? Well, there's a lot of stuff there, right? Like If she had, in fact, been to Dubai, that'd be something pretty easy to cooperate, right? I suppose. I don't think I took it that way. You mean you don't think that she went to Dubai? Are you, are you saying Dubai, really? Yeah. Uh, likely to be at that point. Okay, so she's making that up? 
well, if she's making it up or that is a fantasy. Like a way of dreams, and, it, and they're very real, and we think we've been there. Uh, that hey, at that time that she had been to Dubai, she has a whole history of going to all sorts of different But she has gone to some of which you're right. Well, the history would be documented because there'd be plane tickets, there'd be family members knowing that she was gone for a period of time, uh, things like that that you can corroborate, right? If I had, if at the moment, I thought that was an easier thing to corroborate. Yeah, I think that it would be testing What about Alaska? Remember her talking to you about Alaska later in the interview? How oh, yeah, I had trouble with Alaska because. I, and you know what? Went there, and I think she had gone there. I meant to say Australia. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you had the same trouble I did. We were having the same problem. She never said she went to Alaska. She said Australia, right? You did say Alaska. Oh, she did. Sir, she said. Okay. Not not only that. Uh, you know, your head is spinning when you some of the stuff, uh, but later on. I'm pretty sure that her that she had a husband who was stationed in Alaska. So I was a little suffering. And uh, <coughs> that she was in Alaska and I was it. Uh, I think in my notes I have down that he did I think there's really Alaska. Alaska happened. They lived in Alaska, okay. <laughs> That was my fault. I meant to talk about the Australian trip where she says her and Harley went over there and she blacked out and was on a beach and doing crazy things, she said, and then realized Harley was by herself. Do you remember that? It's something like that. And uh, I'm relieved that you were as confused. And we know there's nothing in the record to indicate that she's ever been to Australia. She also tells you in this clip that she changes personas when she's stressed out. Remember that? Yeah. Is that is that consistent with disassociative identity disorder? Yes. A triggering event. Yes. Okay. We're going to play the next clip now, okay? Uh, we're going to go to just have a second. We're now going to jump to People's Exhibit 731. Which is your interview? What's the date of this thing? It would be on November 16, 2022, <coughs> in the morning. We're going to start this clip at one hour, 31 minutes, and 50 seconds, and we're going to stop it at one hour, 47, and 22 seconds. Four, four, No, that's for the record, doctor, just so the, the record indicates what we're playing. Okay. Go and play. The being projected as some monster, and like you don't know, like looking around and people like, this is not me. I do these things, and I don't you know what I'm saying. This made this small effort. Is it possible that it did stay? Um, yeah. If I did, I didn't know I did or did not intentionally do it. Do you know what I'm saying? There was no intention to harm anyone that would be a loved one of mine. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, I did not see him. What? See him? Where did you see it? Yeah. And I did not do that. I did this, not to put it back, but whatever. Um, but this is one thing that she keeps saying. She didn't do, or else she gives, you know, you do give some pretty bloody stories about you saying that. Um, there is a possibility she doesn't know who that point. 
Do you think that's possible? Oh, I've said that from the beginning, but I, I, all over the place, that's I really, same job, I can look at, is it possible you do that when you were ever on stage? And I was in a one state, could you stay in one of these states where you were to get that involved? Oh, yeah, I've said that definitely. I know that. But I it was not an intention to hurt Anna. Like, I was never, like, no, absolutely not. I love Anna. I took care of these kids since they were five and two. I had these kids from coast to coast, country to country. Yeah. Like, that's not, what do, what do I gain out of hurting a child? Absolutely nothing. Like, I lose everything in my entire life. And not only is it about me being hurt, but other people around me. And if I'm sitting there telling you that I care about all these people, there are other people hurting this. If I was going to hurt somebody, why would it not be these people that are hurting people? Right. No, it would not be to hurt a child. You see what I'm saying? Like, absolutely not. It would not be an intention to be like, okay, that's it. You're done for the day. No, like, that's not how it works. I don't have a whole life of doing things right, you know, to do that. I don't work my whole life to do things right, to just be like, today's the day, I'm just going to blame my entire life and everybody else's. That's not how it works. These people in here do this, so I don't. No? Anything I mean, you don't take somebody out and go shopping, do this, do that. You don't go buy somebody Valentine's candy yeah. to knock them off the planet. <laughs> that day you were born. Yes. So I don't like, they don't even understand this. That's just well, not how it works. You don't buy somebody an hour of clothes for this amount of time. You don't go do this, you don't go do this. Like, I don't get it. I've had this, I've had this kid in Mexico, Alaska. All these places, not have to scratch on their body. Tell me once more. Um, were you really in Australia? Yes. When? I think it was 2017 or maybe 18. How did you just find that? I went with people. I reckon to see where I went. Well, I went with there's, I think it was Sam. Oh, Christina, Sam, all other people. And then, care again. I don't think they will with us then. Sitting with time to time, they all have to get away from this mess. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like they're gone. Like summer, oh, I just be home. Just be Because why? Like, well, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I think mean, that was my life. I would rather packing up all stuff, just taking everybody back home to South Carolina, taking care of everybody. Life is much easier than that. Because mm -hmm. I can't go there. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. no, they're around. No, Landon's mom. Landon's mom. Landon? Which was Gannon's mom's mom. Yeah. Gannon's? This is Gannon's grandma. We had another group. Oh, with She helped me when we lived there and I had the kids. She helped me. She was our only person to help me. But I also had other people there that could help. Support system, yes. I would be, uh, yes. if I could call ID, I could help, I had other people who, programs that I could be like, great, right, I need to go to this, so I could drop them up here for the day. I had support, I had support, I had My first call, I had support, I had you say was there, right? And he said that he left a list, gave a list of 12 
exclamations that you gave for what happened because then I'll have a flashback or something, but I don't know if that flashback is a cool flashback or not. Yeah. And I'll have a nightmare about something, so I'll hope the nightmare was a nightmare, but the nightmare becomes real. So then I'll give up with me, that's really going on for hours and hours and hours and hours. Then sometimes I'll have something and I'll try to put together something and it's like, it's really happening. Because then I told you earlier that I think if something's really going on, if this was real or not, I never said anything in my thoughts, which is one big nightmare. But so, any of it, it's all running together. Because sometimes I don't really know what's going on, what's really not going on, you know what I mean? Then one minute, something can happen, and I'll switch personality, and someone will say, and the other personality, no, this is what really happened. You know what I mean? Then I'll hear that like, another voice, so not schizophrenic, but it's so easy. And it'd be like my brother would be scared me this. So it's like going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth that I drive max so absolutely nuts. So when you ask me why well, I can tell you hundred percent that I remember sitting on the couch, you know, somebody not being in the garage, you know, I'm gonna remember I'm in the garage. I'm gonna go look at windows and stuff outside. Seeing someone downstairs, but that was the things I could 100% remember. But running around frantic, not knowing what was going on. So that's what I guess. Was my best dream or fantasy or you know what that you have that influences what you think you have. But I know I don't think it was just that you told me. But I don't know. It could be, how do you know? There's three people who are struggling with the flow. But I'm saying though, but you don't know because well, one person's telling me this, how do I know? Because this person could be trying to go with the bad person. You see what I'm saying? Because who knows what that person was really doing? You see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what you told me. I know, I'm not even talking about them. I'm talking about what this person was doing. How do you know? Because one minute I was doing this, next minute I was doing this, but another person was doing this because I was doing two things at once. So how do we know? So let's go step forward. Let's figure out whether we're in some peculiar state. And it is not possible for you to remember what happened. It's not going to work for me because I'm not like that. I have to know answers. Dude, I wouldn't care if it was just a random person on the street who was a bad person. Yeah, I wouldn't care. Because they would just be a bad person. Yeah. I wouldn't care. But you're like that. See the news every day bad people, bad things, bad things happen to bad people. But when bad things happen to good people, it's hard, especially when I'm sitting there lost. You know, it's you're sitting there lost. Because you're trying to think, 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 and there's probably no there's probably a good reason for why you don't. And you know, you had that sense of truth. And you've been through a lot of prayer and stuff. Um but let's try to find out why I absolutely believe that people yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I wish I would have just lived and he asked me just to get there. I don't know about the face kingdom charges. But who has to be in there? He had wanted me just to leave and not even tell how early. 
God, I should have just did it. Isn't that some really bad idea? No, but at least we've been saved. At least we've been on the East Coast saved. Or why not saved? He wanted to go with me. He knew I was leaving. He wanted to go with me. He did. He said, you're going back. Mommy, Nana, Mommy. I would stay with you and stay with Mommy, Nana, and Mommy. Who's Mommy? His Mommy, his Nana, his Poppy, he would never. The East Coast, yeah. To the East Coast. But, uh, is that with your mom? No, his Mommy. What? No. His, his family member. Yeah, his family member. Yeah, his family member. Yeah, his mom. Oh. Uh, they were away. Yeah, he knew I was leaving to go back home to the East Coast. And he was like, just take me to you. And I said, son, it cannot. It's kidnapping. Your dad would have me hand over a kidnapping because even though I'm your primary caregiver, I don't, I can't just take you. And if I would have just did that, everybody would just be fine. So, so, what? So, what? How do you know? You gotta add that to the mix. I've got how to be trying to figure out how much time to need. But yeah, I have to make sure that they were safe. Because I didn't want to leave them safe. You don't realize that happens the kids playing the hand and if I would have left them, they would not have to take care. Yes, money. Money's not everything. They would have had to be aided financially. They would not have anybody to take care of their academics. They would not have had anybody to take care of their school stuff. Like, oh, it's just a big school. Oh, it's this. They would not have that. Without me, they had none of that. So they would have lost all those things. They would have just been thrown with babysitters. Who would have babysitted them? Did you ever cross your mind that maybe he had to stay off? No, absolutely not. I this was my plan. I could not just take them to South Carolina and drop them off on my mother. She should throw it at And if I did that, they were in just as worse hands than they are not taking care of them. Okay? So, so the plan had to be add more to my plate to figure out. How am I going to get them safely to their mom so she can get pussy back? But at the same time, she needs a house. And in order to get custody back, a woman can get custody back if I help her because I'm the one that the reason we got custody was because of me. So I can help her get custody back to her. How am I going to do this? Do it correctly. Make sure she has a home. But it's coming again. Dan doesn't need to die. What are you talking about? Dan dying has nothing to do with that. I didn't come up with any idea of Dan dying. My point is getting him safely to his mother. Would that would have been the plan? I could not get him that day. I told him Wednesday I would have worked out with him with her. But talking to her, getting her a home, I can't just go buy her a home. That's not simple. You see what I'm saying? She was in drug addict. Drug addicts call this in. They repeat the same cycle over and over and over. So I didn't lose the battle. I should have just took them with me, started a school across the country, and then just been like, oh, well, one of y'all need to figure it out. I'll become a better parent. That's what I should have done. Love that day. That's what I should have done. Okay, we started at uh, 147.17. Thanks, Mr. Tumi. <laughs> Not sorry. So I'm going to ask you a few questions about this uh, clip we just saw. Um, and I want to kind of start where we left off, where she's talking about kidnapping and Gannon wanting to go to South Carolina. You remember that? I, I found the entire thing incredibly confusing. She had to take care of Gannon and she had to sleep with 
that point, the eyes kind of what in the hell is going on here. Okay, and, and, and Dr. Lewis, Mr. Tellini is going to ask you some questions when I'm done. If we can just focus on my question, and then if there's other things you want to add, I'm sure Mr. Tellini can ask you about that, okay? Is that so fair? I thought I was responding to it. No, I want to talk about, uh, well, is it that unusual that an 11-year-old boy uh, wants to be with his mother? And do you think that might have an impact on his stepmother, Ms. Stout, the fact that Gannon wanted to be with his real mom? I, I don't think that this demonstrated that. It's incredible. But, uh, there was something incredibly puzzling about who wanted to be with who, who she loved, who she was taking. I found it utterly confusing. Do you think that might be a stressor that Miss Stout talks about? The fact that an 11 year old boy says, I want my mother, not you. I don't think that this is what her thing. Okay. Well, I don't think we heard that it's a possibility in, a, in another story in another world. Well, let me, let me just ask you do you think that's a stressor? The fact that an 11 year old boy tells his stepmother that I want to be with my mother, not you. It may or may not, depending on a relationship, depending on other, depending on so many factors. It's just speculation. And do you remember in the clip her saying that I couldn't leave, I couldn't leave them by themselves. I was the only one taking care of them or worse than that. Yeah. And you know that she had been searching on her phone about moving to Florida by herself, looking for one bed apartments and looking for another man, that kind of stuff. That was well before Gannon was killed, right? I don't know. <laughs> Several times during the interview, um, you look to your right. And appear to be talking to Mr. Chamini about this is evidence that she may not remember anything, things like that. I was trying to figure out from what what do you make of this? Is it possible she doesn't remember this? Uh, I uh, trying to see if he understood better what was going on there. Well, and Miss Stout could hear everything you're saying, right? I think Miss Stout could hear everything you're saying, just like we could. Absolutely. It was and she had already been evaluated by the state hospital and found to be legally sane, right? And it said that she was that she was sane. And she already went through this process where she talked to uh, two psychologists explaining what happened and things like that. And now she's talking to you after that. And you think it's okay to say she may not have memory recall of what happened in front of her? Yes, I. Uh, you know, it was kind of an open question to me. And also, really, it was open to her also. Do you, know, do you remember what was going on? In my mind, it was incredibly uh, it wasn't clear that she was making me sense. And a couple of times in this clip, you asked her what we refer to as a leading question. In other words, you said, uh, do you think it's possible that you were in a peculiar state at the time of this? Remember asking those questions? Yes. I think it's dangerous to plant those types of words into a defendant's mind when you're doing a forensic interview. Well, I think that if this has not come up previously and it has not been Part of the common knowledge that she did go into these kind of objects. but it was sort of broken. What do you think was happening when we were thinking these things? It, it did not make sense. And what was making things so confusing? Okay. And, uh, and was evidence, questions, other data that. That she did seem to go. to this was the rush.
knew already. It wasn't adding, oh, gee, you go into these states. We already knew from that this happened. I think it's possible. It's really seemed impossible. This really did. Well, but she's never heard it from a doctor who's doing an evaluation for her insanity that the doctor thinks that she was in a peculiar state. That has an impact on someone, doesn't it? I believe that I was collecting what we already knew from previous okay. discussions and that I was not introducing a new idea, but that um, this was an established occurrence and that, you know, it's possible that this where you are in the fun. I didn't know. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, the next clip is about seven minutes long. Uh, we can play that or whatever the court wants to do as far as lunch goes. Um, I assume you're going to have some follow up. Probably. That clip. It's probably better to play the clip nearer in time to when the follow up is as opposed to. I would appreciate that. Okay. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our uh, lunch break. I have uh, everyone back in the jury room at uh, one twenty. We should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Um, and with that, I'll rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May I be seated? The record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Um, so, Dr. Lewis, what can we do to make sure that you're here and ready to go at 120? What do you need? Great. Right. Okay. Well, the reason I asked that question is because um, you were supposed to be here yesterday at nine, weren't. We're supposed to be here yesterday at one o'clock, weren't. We're supposed to be here this morning at nine o'clock and weren't. So we need to start. We need to have everybody, whatever it is that needs to be done, needs to be done in such a fashion so that we're here ready to start at 120. Is there anything that I can do to help make sure that that happens? To okay. The attorneys, Your Honor, I did call last night at four. I I understand that. Okay. That was why there was a difficulty because I thought maybe I did, I didn't want to be late for you. Right. Make it in the afternoon or tomorrow because I was quite ill. Feeling better now? Are you feeling better now? Right now, good. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we will hope that that will continue. Do whatever it is that you need to do. Communicate with Mr. Tallini and Mr. Cook uh, in whatever fashion that you need to communicate so that we will have everybody here in place ready to go at 120 because um, the jury's waiting. Everybody's waiting on that. Um, in addition, counsel approach, please. We'll be in recess until one twenty. Then. All rise.
All right, court will call 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stouck. Record should reflect the jury is not present in the courtroom. Uh, is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? Prosecution? Yes, Your Honor. Um, okay. I don't think we put this on the record at the time, but I could be wrong. But uh, if the court recalls, I was asking for notes and documents that were used during a portion of the interview that we're watching now this afternoon mm -hmm. that the doctor had. Namely, there was a so-called confession that was written in Latin. Um, Mr. Cellini informed me that those documents were lost, uh, that they don't know where they're at, and that the Latin confession was gibberish. I just want to, as a, a precaution, <laughs> I don't want something to come out of Dr. Lewis's box regarding these notes for the first time while she's on the stand uh, because I'm under the impression they're gone. I'm going to ask her about it, uh, but I can foresee her pulling notes out and saying they're right here uh, or words to that effect. And so, I, 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 like I said, I have no reason to disbelieve what Mr. Tweeney is telling me. Well, here's, well, wait a minute. Um, so you, you do intend to ask about it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, then what I can do is confirm that, yes, the notes were lost, that she does not have them, uh, which would alleviate the issue of her pulling them out during trial, I suppose. Um, I thought it was more of if you didn't get it, you were going to ask that she not be allowed to testify about it. Um, but your issue is... You don't want you don't want to start questioning her and then say, "Oh yeah, by the way, here they are." Do I have that right? I don't want her to pull out a Latin confession that somehow is okay. relevant in this case uh, because I've been told differently by. That's well, it seems to me that the easiest way to deal with that is once um, Dr. Lewis gets here and is on the stand. I'll ask her if she has those. We can make uh, she can tell us what happened or if she had it and where it went. And or if she doesn't have it, if she does have it, I think you're entitled to it. Absolutely. And then and, and then it's a different issue about how to proceed forward then. But um, if she doesn't have it, then I think we can proceed in the fashion that you want. So, Sounds good. Okay. I hope I understand why I brought it up. Yeah, no, I do. All right. And I know Dr. Lewis is down the hallway, and I think we're just uh, waiting on her. And once that may be her. And for you, for the video, it's probably easier to just have her as opposed to transferring. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that yeah, that's, that's what we're, we're going to do? Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, Mr. Cook, go ahead and bring her on in. And we were thinking, Mr. Tallini had suggested, and I think it's probably accurate to place her where she was when we ended because we're still not done with the videos yet. So yeah, that's fine. Sure. I just need um, my bag and uh, pen. Okay, bag and <clears throat> your notes are just the yeah, bag. Everything. Okay. <clears throat> well, soccer. We're late. We saved a jumping spider at lunch. That's why you need to get back. Audio's working fine, Judge. Audio's working fine. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Lewis, I just wanted to uh, double check. Um, my understanding is that at some point during one of your interviews with the defendant, um, you obtained from the defendant a, uh, as I understand it, I think it was a confession that was written in Latin. Is that accurate? Your Honor, I have been looking for something written in Latin. I didn't receive it, but in my notes it says, get hold of a letter written in Latin. Okay. So somebody has it. Let's, uh, well, I want to focus on that for just a moment. Um, you understand that there is that document, or it was created at some point in time, and you may or may not have had it at some point in time. No, I never had it. You, you never had it. Okay. I became aware of it very recently. So it's fair to say then that it is not in your possession now. It's not in the stack of notes and things that you have now. All right. We good? 
There's also some documents that she used uh, that she exchanged back and forth with the defendant with signatures and things like that that we didn't get. I don't know if she has any of those documents either, Your Honor. Do you have uh, Do you have any of the signatures, uh, the other signatures that the defendant made? What uh, could have been available to anybody? Well, a clock, and you mm -hmm. that. And we have that. We got that. Very important. And also, I have here, and I made this available to others, something called Ray's complex figure. It is a. Uh, we have that. And it takes a bit of explaining in terms of what it is. The best I could do. Okay. But I do have it, and if you wish, you could copy it. Perhaps you could give it back to me or give me a copy. We actually have the raised complex figure, if I recall correctly. Um, it, you should infer a copy of it and for memory, for memory, she did. And I have. Right. I think we have that. I think what Mr. Young was asking about was the signatures and the confession in Latin. Right, and you do not have either one of those. Okay, okay, all right. Thanks, Judge. All right. Anything else? Nope. Anything from the defense? No, sir. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in then. That's what we'd rather be. You want to put that word? You want to look at Well, so far, this was okay. All right, okay. and the, audio the, the audio is the same. It is. It comes out of the speakers in the ceiling. If we had to have the ring lights off, Judge. I don't know. If we... Yeah, um, and that would that'd be a good idea. The greens, right? Yeah, just the green ones. Your Honor, there. Uh, I was given materials from tens uh, of uh, documents that had been signed by uh, Leticia in the past. Okay. But you don't have any in your possession now. That, that they gave me? That anybody gave you. Well, I may have them. You don't have them with you now. But they have. And I, okay. clear, but I think there's a little bit of confusion. There were some signatures done by Ms. Stout that were found like in records and so forth. Okay. That we provided to um, okay. Dr. Lewis. And those have been provided. One we provided to Dr. Lewis have been provided to the district. It's the ones that were at the jail that we can't locate as well. Okay. And it'll become obvious when we play that portion of the video what, what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, you guys. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stauk. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. When we took our break, uh, we were in the midst of the cross-examination of uh, Dr. Lewis. That's where we will resume. Mr. Young. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at this time, we'll play People's Exhibit 732, which is the interview that took place on November 16th, 2022 with Dr. Lewis. We're going to start it at 5530 and ended at 102.37. About 30 minutes. And it's about seven minutes, 55.30. Oh, so I'm sorry, I misheard you, okay, go ahead. Thank you. Not me, but someone else could take over and hurt someone, and then that's not where I want to be. Yeah, because I don't, to do that, like, that's not so. Why do you have to finish? You know, it'll be so intense. Yeah, what your I gotta say is for good intentions, so you know, but 
It's not like it's just like just some random person who don't cause problems. <laughs> you know, it's for good. No, maybe it doesn't look good for some people, but it's for good. It's for someone that's for being healthy, but for really letting into a pretty bad fight or whatever it's taken over. It's really bad, but carrying away. <laughs> What's happening? What's going on here in that? Can you see? I'm not violent. I'm not violent. I'm not a violent person. I'm not a violent person. I am not violent at all. But I am not going to let people be tacked into bed. I'm not going to let people be hurt because I don't do this to make somebody okay. If someone is trying to hurt people, I am going to make sure that they're okay because that is what I do each and every time. I'm going to always make sure that people are going to be okay. So I don't look. Could you just let me be? understand why I'm always being asked. What is going on in here? Because this is my job to do things for people and to protect them. Because yes. it's what I have to do. That is what has a protection. I'm going to always do that because if people are molesting kids and people are hurting kids, this is what I do for them. And if people are hurting with elderly people and people are always doing this to people, this is what I'm going to do. And if people are inside your home or inside my home, I'm going to protect them. Do you understand that? I'm just saying, that's all. But you play the Do you know Where? Do you know where you are? Yeah. 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 What just said? Can you ask me about my grandpa? I asked you to do that. Oh, we were talking about Fred. And then we go. It's good to see Fred here. And he has a dog. Yeah, he did work at a prison. I think it was in Lumberton, North Carolina. Where? Lumberton, North Carolina. Yeah. But I didn't know what just happened with you. Mm -hmm. right. No. Something really sketchy. Then uh, I spoke with someone who, uh, who said, I protect them, I protect them, I always protect them, I don't have any of the Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I don't know. I just think it was the protection. I'm oh, sorry. I don't get it. I was saying sorry, I don't know what we were talking about. We were talking about friends and I remember. You know, you told me that it was a kind of space. It's the rest of you. 
things. Who would be the protector? Oh, my protector is Maria. Maria, I don't like very much to talk with you. If you want to talk to Maria in the house, sometimes she'll talk, sometimes she won't. <laughs> I love it for you, Taylor. Yeah. Taylor. You look at your head. Taylor, where is your special friend? You go and say Maria's in love. I like to go and hang out and drink some wine and be by the beach and hang out with Tyler. Um, well, I would like you to go there and let me talk with Maria. I will not talk to you. But now I'd like you to go to a special place. And Maria, I need to talk to you. Because Maria, you have a lot of control. What do you do? Is that correct? I think she does, for sure, but I need to talk with you. Yeah, I know you can hear me. And you know I can. Okay, we paused it at an hour and two minutes and 37 seconds. Do you mind if I turned you around, Dr. Lewis? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Is this the magic you were talking about yesterday? Well, this is, that was a joke. Technique. And in which we learned how do you get to talk? Self. Uh, with patients themselves, uh, by a lot of health. Uh, get to this old name for used hypnosis, much whatever it's known that dissociative individuals are very suggestive. So you're always the so you are, if you're talking with a kid or with somebody who has a problem, let's say, what do you suggest that we test that we trust or that we are find out more? You know, we try not. We try not to say separate sort of aspect of your world. And we learned, and this is not only from recitations, but uh, from a part of that is that by and large they have a special place that, because it is known that. Say there are three or four individual entities of this world. Sometimes they can hear what's going on if you're. Sometimes. Say no. And uh, what we learn from our patients is to simply what happens to you when you go? Where do you go when I'm talking to so and so, Maria? Where do you go? Uh, what about a special place? Do you have a special place? And, and let me start. I get that. Uh, that's why you're asking at the end. Tell me about your special place so that the persona that you think is Maria comes out. If, well, if you like, uh, someone can say, there is no special I don't have a special place. But when it, it is very common. But in, when we started the video, 
Maria came out, right? The protector. That's the first time in the entirety of your interviews with Ms. Stalk that you think Maria comes out. I don't recall if that is. I, uh, you've watched it more than I, I don't know. That was the first time. But uh, well, and I let me... know that she existed, and I did want the opportunity to learn more because I suspected that if indeed... That perhaps it was in the guise of, or in the wanted to to talk to the. But you didn't do anything to have Maria come out. She just came out and started talking to you, right? Sometimes. Well, that's what happened in the video, right? I watched kind of carefully, and I think I I said, you know, I really would like to talk to Maria. Very commonly, but at the beginning, uh, and was that the Russian accent that we heard on there that you were talking about? I don't know. That was that appeared, and uh, I'm not sure whether that is typically video or it's a entity or it's a combination. These are not well defined, well distinct. Well, she said she's the protector, and you followed up and said, hey, we just talked to the protector, and then well, she said, she said can I finish my question, please? And then she says, well, yeah, Maria's my protector, yeah. and then I'm Taylor. That's what she just said, That's right? right. Yes. And there was no accent when the protector was on there, right? Right. She was speaking just like she speaks all the time. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what the point was. The point is she didn't have an accent when she came out as Maria. That's the point, right? You're, you're not dealing with logic. <laughs> this is not a total different unit. Not a consistent person who remembers it or is fooling you and always be a certain way. How do you know she's not fooling you? How do you know that? Well, watch, listen, see what is consistent, see what isn't. Is there any benefit? This? So far, Speaking with a Russian kind of accent, not really Russian words. Advantage, disadvantage, something. Well, here's 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 the benefit. Let me explain it to you. Okay. You want consistency in your persona. If you want to say Maria comes out and speaks in a Russian accent, she should come out and speak in a Russian accent. You should. Is that logical? Logic. It is not logical. Okay. They are as logical as dreams. So you handed her a piece of paper and asked her to sign her name. Yeah. What happened to that piece of paper? I thought that I had anything. I will certainly find it for you. Wait a minute here. You just told the court <laughs> that you don't have these documents. That you lost them. That's what you just. There is this is probably. Yeah, Honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have you step out in the hallway, back to the jury room, please. <laughs> Guys, for the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. The record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Mr. Young? Yeah, I hate to say I predicted this, but this is exactly what I predicted was going to happen, uh, that somehow she pulls these documents out when confronted on them. And that's why I wanted to get on the record that she lost it. Oh. And the record should reflect that the witness is now giving Mr. Tallini a series of documents that she has on her lap. And if let's let's finish it out. What's the record? What what is it that you're being handed? These are documents that were already provided. Okay, so show them to Mr. Young. 
and let's see if at least they are what he understands them to be. I have seen those. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. I don't know what this is. Mr. Young? Three of the four documents that were shown to me by Mr. Tulini we have in discovery, which talked about the test that the doctor had told the court about over the break. Uh, one of the documents, it looks like a series of highlighted colors and different colors. On the top of it, it says Leticia, and then below it, it says red. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I don't know if that's the document that she has up there uh, on the video or not, uh, because I've never seen those documents. So what are you requesting as a remedy? If she's got these documents, I'd like to have them. And I don't want to okay. be surprised by them when I'm asking her when she's already told the court she didn't have them. All right. Well, here's, here's the easy solution to this. Uh, we'll take about a 15-minute recess. Um, in the state of Colorado, um, Dr. Lewis, in, in case, because uh, I know you testify in other places, in the state of Colorado, anything that you relied on, any piece of information, document, uh, anything that was given to you by the defense counsel, anything that was given to you by the defendant, anything that was given to you by CMHIP, anything and everything in your file, um, without exception, must be provided to the prosecution. In addition, in the state of Colorado, anytime somebody takes the witness stand and is starting to testify, and is starting to testify and all of a sudden is looking at some documents in their hands or something like that, counsel is entitled to see what they are. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take about 15 minutes. You look through everything she has in her lap. Then we'll see where we are. Um, and we can go from there. There's a number of remedies uh, from there. Um, I and we can deal with all of those remedies once I have a better idea of what it is that you think she has that has not been provided. Um, and uh, I know that certain things were taken out. I want those taken back out. Um, and we're going to put them in the court file uh, to be sealed so that we have something for the appellate record as opposed to he showed me four documents and I had three of them but not the fourth one or whatever. I want it I, I want in the court record um, what it is that we're referring to when we talk about that. I also will have the documents to, if you find any documents that you've not previously been given, take those out uh, because A, you're entitled to see them, and B, I want those in the record as well for appellate purposes in the event that uh, that becomes necessary. Um, obviously, you would also be entitled to have um, uh, either Dr. Torres or Dr. Gray look at those uh, and render opinions about that uh, in rebuttal if you choose to do so. So um, let's start there so that we have at least a starting point. So court will be I would just recess. ask that Mr. Tolini join me in that so yep. we're looking at the same That's things. fine. So court will take a recess until 2 o'clock. All rise. Yeah.
uh, people versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury's not present in the courtroom. Um, how are we with the review of notes? Uh, Mr. Tillini and I had an opportunity to go through them very quickly. Okay. Um, obviously, I would need more time to go through them thoroughly. Uh, the remedy that I suggest on behalf of the people is that she's not allowed to have notes during the remainder of my cross and during Mr. Tillini's redirect. We'll keep the notes over on the table. Um, someone can make copies for the court file and the appellate record later. Uh, I don't want to keep the jury waiting any longer. I want to keep going. Uh, okay. And I think that's a reasonable remedy under the circumstances. Mr. Tallini? Okay. All right. So, um, Dr. Lewis, you can have your reports. Um, I don't know that she has her reports. Okay. I, I have copy of the reports and I can. Okay, Mr. Tellini is going to provide you with copies of your reports, but you cannot have copies of your notes uh, or uh, use them during your uh, the remainder of your testimony here. Um, so we'll leave it at that. And uh, prosecution, as this may or may not have something to do with rebuttal, um, I'm going to impose the burden on the prosecution to uh, take those. You can just release those in discovery to Mr. Tallini and also upload them. Uh, let us know when you're going to do that, and we will need to do that as a sealed file. Um, and we need to take those and have one of our people start copying it now? Yeah, okay. that would be fine. He's got a lot more pull than I do, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I also want to, um, I, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but please, everybody, be patient with me. Um, I, I know that uh, this matter is being broadcast um, simultaneously with um, what's going on in the courtroom, and I know that I have a lot of people in the courtroom. Regardless of how you view this case, remember what it is about. There is uh, a child who lost his life and a woman who may be facing a life sentence. Okay. So remember what this case is about and remember the decorum. My order is that there are no cell phones to be used in the courtroom unless you are with the press. And we know who those people are because they're sitting in the front row. Remember what this case is about. None of these people in here are actors. They are all associated with this case in some fashion. It's not television. If your phone is, if something's going on with your phone and it's really important, I get that. Go in the hallway. You will not be allowed to have your phone out unless you are press. If you have your phone out and someone sees you with it, you will be asked to leave. You will not be permitted back into the courtroom. Also, please understand, and I'm, I know that, that sometimes people say that I can be really direct, but I try to be that way so that there's not a lot of confusion. This is not a guideline. This is not a suggestion. This is the process that we're going to follow in the courtroom, and it applies to everyone. So unless you're press or you're associated with that team or this team, put your phones away. Don't get them out. So, I understand we're ready for the jury. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just real quickly, Judge uh, gave that entire pile of um, documents to our investigator Cecil Weir. He's making three copies. One Perfect. that we'll, we'll, we'll get to us. We'll um, get one to the court, and then it'll be released in discovery to the defense. Okay. All right. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yeah. Oh, copy It's essential that they be copied in color because to be the colors must be copied. It's absolutely, it's inaccurate. I, black and white. I'm leaving it up to the, the prosecution uh, for that, and it may be an issue on another day, but it's not one that we're taking up today, and it's not one that we're taking up now. Let's bring the jury back in. <laughs> response on getting another security guy up yeah. here to stand right there looking back. Okay. Mm -hmm.
All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. May I be seated? Court will recall 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Uh, Mr. Young? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Dr. Lewis, uh, we just took a break, and Mr. Tamini and I just went through all your notes that you had here in the courtroom. Is that right? Uh, having gone through those notes, we see no documents that you were using during the course of this interview with Ms. Stout, correct? Not yet. You know, because I don't know what, what there is there in terms of those of that interview. If you have the whole thing, you will see those documents. In the I mean, let me just ask you a simple question. Do you have those documents that you used in the interview with Ms. Stout? Yes or no? I gave them to you. Yeah. They are there, but they haven't been you know, at this time, I'm going to ask um, that the court take judicial notice that Mr. Tolini and I went through those stacks of notes, and none of the notes that she's referring to are in the stack of notes that she has in the court. Mr. Tolini, it's not a judicial notice thing. It sounds like it's a stipulation. There is the complex figure drawing that has not been referenced that were notes that were that was a document that was turned over to this attorney, and that was in there. And I think that's a little bit of the was is having as far as the signatures or the alleged. Okay. Over there. All right. I, I would accept that stipulation. I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Lewis. <laughs> you know the importance of turning over notes that you use in a forensic interview, especially in a homicide case. What did you do with those notes that we just talked about, where you had Ms. Stouck sign something? Whatever she signed there, what I had was turned over to uh, Trulini to be copied and shared with you. May I approach a witness? Oh, yes, you may. Go ahead. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 735. Have you taken a moment to look at that document? This is not, this is a different patient with my health. If you have a question about it, yeah, I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Sure, do you recognize that people that did it at 735? I recognize that it was a communication of mine. She just an email between you and Mr. Tolini, correct? To the best of my knowledge. And does that document accurately reflect that email that you have with regards to the EEG that we talked about yesterday and whether or not you had knowledge that you were withdrawing your request to have an EEG done? To my mind, it was not simply dropping, it was saying, this is not right. Dr. Right. Lewis, just answer my question. I, Does the document accurately depict the email exchange between you and Mr. Tillini with regards to your knowledge of whether an EEG was withdrawn? Yes or no? Whether it was, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the word. Withdrawn, your request for an EEG. It was, it was not a permanently withdrawn thing. It was saying right now. No, no, I'm going to ask you to direct her to Dr. answer my Lewis, question. Dr. Lewis, the question is simple. Is this an email that you sent to Mr. Tolini? Yes or no? Yes, it is okay. an email sent to him. Right. Mr. Young? We move to admit People's Exhibit 735. No objection. Exhibit 735 will be admitted. Go ahead. Thank you. 
And did you say in that email, go ahead and withdraw the EEG? We'll address it at a later time. I said, may now, if we could address it later, this did not mean it's not important. It was just organizing in my head was most important. Like, that became less important than something else. We well, the email speaks for itself, doesn't it? You, you're dictating in the email why you didn't think it was important at that time. Well, I'm saying that there are other, other things have arisen that we should also address. So why did you yesterday blame the attorneys that you didn't know anything about the EEG being withdrawn? I did not consider this withdrawing it permanently, but simply I did not wish to fight with the court over, over are you getting this, are you not? The court refused to get it, and I was saying it can be addressed to them. But I did not think of okay. that thing withdrawal. Listen to my question carefully. Yes. Why did you yesterday tell this jury that you never requested to withdraw the EEG, that the attorneys did it, never told you anything about it? Because I did not request to withdraw it. I said you could kind of wait and do it, and I did not think that they had it. Can I retrieve your document from the case? This is what you said in your email, and you, you can explain what it means after I read it, okay? I have been reading more on Letitia, and I think we should drop the EEG request. What does that mean to you? Rest of it, know the timing of it, and know what I was thinking about at that point that was most important, but this was not something that I was supposed to put. I can't possibly assist you if you don't have this. I think it's, I, I think we should have it, but we can wait. In fact, it may be, I could be mistaken, but I believe that uh, Mr. Fellini had said to me, there will be appeals on this. Yeah, I'm going to ask that that be, uh, yeah. Dr. Lewis, yeah. I'd like, Dr. Lewis, uh, please wait, stop. wait, 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 one at a time, one at a time. Dr. Lewis, please confine your answer to the question being asked. Mr. Tolini will have an opportunity to ask you questions on redirect. And if there's anything that he thinks you need to bring up, he can bring it up then. But just confine your answer to the question being asked. Um, and Mr. Young? No, no, I would ask that what she just said be stricken, uh, that the jury be uh, instructed to disregard it. Mr. Tolini? All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, you're instructed to disregard Dr. Lewis's response to Mr. Young's uh, most recent question. Mr. Young? We're going to play the next video, okay? Would you like me to turn around towards the TV? Okay. And so for the record, we're going to play uh, People's Exhibit 732. Uh, we're going to start at an hour and seven minutes and eight seconds and end it at an hour and 40 minutes and eight seconds. So this is roughly 33 minutes. Um, and so we're going to play it continuously through, Dr. Lewis. So if you wouldn't mind, I'll ask you some questions when it's over, okay? Date of it again, please. It's November 16th in the afternoon, uh, 2022. Sorry, we got the screen. Oh, sorry, my bad. My initials there. And who said that she she said that she didn't know who you are? Who was that? Okay. Because you know who was taking her. I can break out. You did not mean it. Who could it?
And it's really sitting so by the end of the trailer, but I like to let her know. Okay, maybe it's just some tea there, or maybe tea eggs, maybe some sort of dialogue. And here's the subject, what I was. Let's go with a left me. So it's easy. So we're going to go. It's easy. And it's so good. Taylor, that's why you said it wasn't you. No, it's not easy. This one. Okay, you said you need to talk to my Yeah, but, uh, Lindsay, you wrote that? Yeah. Okay, and Lindsay, you see, I just want to say that left hand. Because, uh, you, Taylor, are right. Uh-huh. Just, you know, maybe I'm going to talk to you. And maybe you said, uh, Taylor, I'm going to Okay, I am. Um, two. Oh, I don't want to play favorites. Four and one. You're important. Um, and each. You um, Mm-hmm. So, well, yes, Maria said she will come on her terms, but don't think that she has this to pay. Who said that? Was that So we did a research and come from Trump's Don't think that she answers to anyone. 
the ticket and the only fault not me. And the only fault Yeah. Yeah, but that's what I, I can't what to do. But she can because I don't curse and do bad things. You see what I mean? I don't curse and do bad things. I don't live with that one. Yeah, so that's why I have to be I need to Maria. so long. the Right? See, so like, because I was really a person. Sometimes I kind of like it, not like it. Sometimes I mean, she is like, because I don't have the good, not the bad, but he's the bad. You see what I'm saying? They get along with my better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Yeah, because I'm, I do a lot more good. You see what I'm saying? You do a lot more good. Yeah, she yeah. don't always agree with the good. Uh, oh, look, she says. Right, okay. Well, my name, I just need a good. Let's see how do good the people do right by me. Yeah. Do you think I'm bad? No, I'm saying I think, I think some things are good, you know what I mean? And so she thinks that things are good that they don't. Right. And so that's why sometimes she doesn't like talking to me. Well, yeah, it so, seems to me that sometimes we think it's good. Be the strong duper. Find the poor things under your control. And then they don't see it as right. I try to like be the mediator or try to be calm. Everybody else get along, communicate, do good to people. What happens when you move? What happens when you temper the best people? What happens to them? And when you want to go and take over, and then um, takes away from like the good part of Taylor. You know, like, good part of Taylor is the like, a good communicator, effective, you know, like not a bad thing. I can communicate effectively with them. Do they know what to do? Like, if, I, if they come to visit me and I'm as myself as Taylor, then I can sit down and talk to them and be like uh, able to like be nice and be like, oh, okay, how are you guys doing? They don't even know what to do. Oh, they come and they see I'm not, like, whatever, I'm not Taylor. Because then I'm just like, take me on. But then I'm not trying to be me, but then I can't take it if they're not like that. I'm not going to What sounds pretty good to you with me? Hmm? How honest for you? I'm honest with you. Okay. If anything you want to ask about me, or anything you really want to tell me, then they will be my job. Well, you can check your mind. Maybe you can. What the hell is it? Yeah. And Taylor. Uh, no. I don't know. Don't give a rate to Taylor. So I don't sign a book. Taylor's and Marie but it's not it's not fair. Um I think Marie sometimes Taylor but you see it's playing for stuff. You kind of cook. Um we and with you and Taylor I really want to tell you again. Okay. And so what happened was, uh, did you want to tell you what happened? Or? Sure. Okay, so um, the night of January 27th, uh, 2020, 
I had um, reported again missing because he was you had not been missing. I had since so January so, two thousand. So you reported that he was because I was well because I was calm at first because. I didn't think anything was wrong. I thought that he was just playing like a hiding challenge and that he would be okay. And I thought that he would eventually come out of this hiding spot and he would eventually and everything would be fine. He wanted to have a bunch of followers on YouTube. So I thought that. The whole practice circular. So I wasn't in a panic mode. I wasn't in any kind of like uh, anxiety or losing my kid. Not yet. I was not there. So we had already had to. No. No, then it happened to him. Hope you saw that. After what? After. You were there. Right. He was, he was missing. He was, he was already missing. Yeah, he was missing, but nothing had happened to him. He was missing. He was in trouble. Well, I believe he was. I guess he was the house or he was hiding. I'm not sure. That's why. I moved to the room. I think all of you. Right now, I'm talking to everyone. I feel all of you have been covering for each other. And, you know, I think that you all want to be able to do it by the TCM. Actually, you're really preventing them from getting help. Not always having these kind of problems. It's not all of that. And I think you're afraid of telling what happened to me. I'm afraid of it. I'm trying to tell you. Do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to keep going? I don't know what you're talking about. Really? Really? Yes. Well, as we heard, I'm just going to keep going. So, um, he was missing, and then I called him for another day. He started to panic after a couple of minutes. That's when I started to get worried because I realized that. It started to rain, it get cold outside. And then after, when we had to drink, it's hard It's the first time that he was born. We came from jail. And I do something. I did try to bring him back. And started writing program and trying to bring him back to life. And when he didn't come back to life, he didn't. Where was he lying? Well, in my arms. In your arms. Where had you found I don't remember where I found him. Just a little bit. So, did you know he was in your arms? Uh -huh. hmm. But do you don't understand why it was like that? It's like like that because he wasn't supposed to die. He was not supposed to. No, I didn't. No, no. Was supposed to.
Is it not supposed to die now? Uh, Sin, someone that made from the earth that she found something of them. And now, what was the person that I What was the idea? What was that supposed to be him? It wasn't supposed to be him. It wasn't supposed to be. What is it supposed to be? And then, our, it was Yes. Yeah, what did you think of what? I'm not a monster. Great. I think I'm not a monster. Anyway, I don't know if I'm a lesbian, and I heard people thinking that I'm just a mass murderer that just killed someone, right? And a lot of them were scanning. Okay, under no circumstances, well, you could be, you could just scan out of all this. Or you can do it with something. Okay, it's not how it works. Did you do something with all this jewelry? Did it? Did it want something? Did it look like something? Oh. You know, they don't know what it's like in my life. I have to see when I realized that it was Gannon. I never knew it was him. Which is just. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was in the hall, we don't understand. So when I was in the hall, okay. Yes, there is no hall. Yeah. We see them big. Okay. They go to every day. Okay, this one. Everybody brings everything. Everyone. That was in the hall, so it was going to be very exciting. Everybody, everyone was looking for the same. There was someone in the hall. They were going to look for everyone that was in the hall. What I did was grab the gun. What should you do? All I did was grab the gun and find the gun because it looked like someone was in the cave, okay? So all I did was grab the gun. All I did was grab the gun. And what happened? I saw someone who looked like they were in the cave and I fired them. That's what I did. Okay. All you did was grab the gun. I had to protect the people that were in the house. Okay. Because if someone was in the home, they were going to rape someone, they were going to molest them, they were going to kill them. I had to protect them. That's all I did. Okay. And I fired the gun. I did not know, didn't have a safety. I didn't know any of that, but that's what I do. I'm trained to do that. Okay, you're trained to kill. I'm trained to kill. Okay, you're trained to train to kill. That's what I do. But trained to kill. I'm trained to kill. That's what I do. Trained to kill. Okay, that's what I do. I kill for a living. Okay. Anyone that tries to hurt me, I'm trained to kill. Okay. That hurts anyone or no? That hurts the people that I care about. Okay, so you kill. Yes, yeah, that hurts. You do not care. Yes, yeah. and that's what I did. What did you do? I took the gun, I fired the gun at someone. They had a cape on, they looked like a dangerous man. You fired at someone? Yes, a dangerous man. No, yeah. You were a I am a dangerous man, okay? That's what I do. This is how I call This is how you old. Yes. What do we see? I do the gun. And then, that's what I did. 
Chúng ta nào Cái Phụ Để không chứ đúng không? Chúng ta đừng Ừ Đúng không? Chúng ta đừng 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 When did you realize it was some person from I don't know if I said anything. I left immediately. I left immediately after I did my job. You were like this. I left immediately after I did my job. Okay. Okay. So, what did you think you had done? Did what I was supposed to do? Which is, I killed the dragon. I a threat. So, threat was there for the TCL family and for the service. Okay. Who did the threat of the family and made so short? Because the TCL and my family, they were missing and I had to protect them. Who was this? The TCL family. Really? The son was missing. The protector, which is what I do. She was upset. Everyone was upset. Little baby girl was upset. Everyone was crying. That's what I do. And then, I I don't know what happened after it ended. Who did this? You tried to turn this into a beast? What? You tried to turn it into a beast? I'm not doing the whole beast. No. I'm just, I'm just, I need to double up. It's very good. What do you want to try? What do you want me to try? Just to me. Need money. Need sanctions. No, no, no. The real sanctions. The real sanctions. You know what I think? Right? I think the two things we say about it is your own twin, it's your own family, etc. You want to call us invisible? No. no. I have jobs to do, I need to drop in early. You should be able to say, only what do you have? What is this here? You teach me how to help with this. I have all the food. I always have all the food. But when you teach me how to help? Who do you try to send for me? Us. Do you teach me how to help? I don't ask for two times. No, you don't ask for me. I'll just try and tell. I don't want to see how many people to see. I don't think you can tell. I don't think you would have let them talk to me. You know, I'm lying to you. I'm working my ass off to get all the things. It's a very tough, you know? Because if you're not going to strong or anything, you can't change me. So, right. This is very much. I don't know how to say that. Not for me. Even my cat bits when I try to say that. I don't know how to say that. I really don't know how to say that. You don't do that or you don't mind how to say that. You don't know how to say that. You don't know how to say that. Well, you just don't know. You just don't know. Just say it. Just say it.
a neighborhood touch times a neighborhood. You ever strong hand. You see it. I think we all have a fantasy. They all strong men. You know, I'll be my help. I defend her. Do you need any props for me? 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 No. Absolutely. Um, you helped. And you got rid of what looked to you like something is very simple to teach you. You shot from the very day. And the person who was went down on the floor. And if they were left, and we all have productive jobs. I mean, well, the job wasn't really done, because as I understand it, but I haven't seen And then I had to go up and how do you do so that we're not never that you know, do it every time? But in general, for multiple passion. Right. To go yeah. Yeah. So, so, what did you do? Yeah. Well, you had to bring it in. So, so. And I certainly did not have any contacts in my son. So, you don't just work on the DC. Okay. Then I had to protect her before I met her. You, you did a. Uh, I did protect her before the Mexico. You did. I did. You protected her before Mexico. Wow. How old was she when you first did mm -hmm. okay. well, My days are different than yours. Your what? My years are different than yours. How old were you? 28. You're how old? 28. 28. So uh, she was without me. So I'm always clean. I'm always on this way. Yeah, she is. She's 39. So, well, let me. My ears are really different than yours. You cannot even comprehend my ears. They're different. Don't even try. I imagine they're mystical. Yeah. Yeah. They're different. So, you have been to teach and protect her from the time he arrived for her. What's that? What was happening to her when we protected? Who's going to do this information? I don't see anyone else. What? I don't see anyone else. I did not without her permission. Her permission and her permission. Yes. And we'll do the follow up. Would you, are you guys gay to talk about? Stuff that how, how you want to use the information that Maria is. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So they will do that. And um, I think I know these people. No, I think none of us here would ever do anything like if we use this, these would only be in Leticia's paper. To get the TCs and some, some baby, so that you get it, you do good at popping all the names. When are you done? No, absolutely. Yes. Take a look on there. That I a group there, please. Can I see you around on there? You always see you around on Yes. Me too? Yes. You know, um, seriously. I don't think them at all, man. So, do you know, I want to thank you. You've been very great yourself, Maria. Do you surprise yourself? Are you in the spring? No, I'm very great. You are very This is why I do not think. Well, you do it, and often you're very great to trust us. But we will only slow and talk about it. Down. And it is, it does not help the TCM 
Just stays here. I think five minutes. We were pretty hard right today. Could do you think we should take a rest for maybe an hour or two? And let's come back in two three. And let's move. Is that her? Sure. Thank you so much. See you. Two or three. I do need the problems. I don't need to say, I don't have to say, I don't have to say, I don't. I would like you not to hurt anything and to remain safe and strong, but not hurt anyone. If you think this may go somewhere, tell me. You'll only have me to tell today and tomorrow, but you have. Do you know the name? You don't talk to those people. Well, maybe later on, maybe you would come forward a little bit and let, uh, let Maria meet you. Yeah. And she doesn't just talk to anyone. I noticed only when I went with the drive when I talked with her that she got a feeling of being, I hope, it's really, uh, was I would you know, and they guessed, and that I don't know. No. Um, but I would have that, and I would have been myself. Do you see? Do you? Okay, I would take a big man with someone. Oh, Maria, I have something that I'm very much surprised to do in the world. Uh, to the uh, well, room. Well, it's I don't know. Where is that? Oh, yes. Did hey, the camera or the video stops at uh, 140 and 08 seconds. Who was that other person that was leaving the room there, Dr. Lewis? Well, uh, Mr. Cellini went out the door, and then some gentleman with a mask on followed him out. Who was that person? I don't recall, and I have no idea. Can we just play that portion back? We're going to play the portion back. You can just look at this TV right here. Okay, we're not talking about him, Dr. Lewis. Please keep watching. Freeze it. Who's that person right there? I don't recognize him. That's not your son? You don't recognize your own son? Because he was running the camera, but I don't recognize him. Well, in the camera, Dr. Lewis, he's going out the door when the camera shuts off. What is your son doing in the interview room? Well, particular interview, we had asked to, uh, to when we put it her, and uh, I had asked her to put it in. No, I didn't. Is that recognized within the field of psychiatry to do forensic interviews with people who are charged with first degree murder and bring your son along? Standard. Here. Cameras be on us and that they be competent. I had said I'd like to have them on. See if it was Josh who told me have to. Uh, well, this investigator seated in the back courtroom was in there, right? Mr. Cellini was in there. Why was your son in there? 
Someone was asked to run if he knew how it could be run to campus. Why did you stop the interview? Well, you have gone endlessly. We spent a day and a half hours of talking to her, trying to get Maria to come out. According to you, I'm assuming you're saying this is Maria who comes out that we see. Here, I'm asking myself, who is this? If you look at at the character they are talking, there are times that uh, apparently she goes by Maria. Her expressions change. She looks different. She sounds different. She does different things. She protects. That there was a back and forth <laughs> over how she perceived herself was going on in her head. But I think that there were times when we saw she. I don't think it was always Maria. I think that there were changes there as I watched as a clinician. There was not a good system. Okay, and I and, and so you're saying that. Leticia could have came back and faked the Spanish accent while she was faking to be Maria. Is that what you're saying? That is not. You did. Well, that's what I'm asking you. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I'm not saying. I don't think that. I don't think it's faked. I think that she switches back and forth, and her identity and who she is is. With what did you talk about after the camera was turned off, Doctor? I beg your pardon? What did you talk about with Maria after the camera turned off? I have no recollection of talking with her after the camera was turned off. No idea. I don't know for sure uh, on the papers, but I can tell you sometimes if things <coughs> seem that they're slowed down or that patient would be improved, sometimes I will write back and forth. I you didn't preserve those documents we've already gone through. You did not preserve those documents that you see her writing on, did you? I do not know. I'd have to look, but I, I don't have a recollection of having preserved them. They were uh, kind of a communication device there, and I may be, you know, they may be there, it might be, and they may have been handed over. I, I don't have perfect memory of what of what happened to those papers. Other serial killers that you've interviewed that you've diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder, for instance, the ones that are on your HBO documentary, when you ask them to change personalities, they do. Some of them do the same neck roll thing. What? Do you remember that? And when they change personalities, they confess and they tell you how they did the killing, correct? So when there is a real definitive kind of uh, different, this is a fluid kind of, as I told you, uh, on again, off again, perfect, logical. But what Maria says to you is a mistaken identity. I didn't know it was Gannon. I shot the gun one time, correct? Uh, gee, someone says this at another time. Someone there with this very odd demeanor says, uh, I'm there to protect them. I, I protect them. Uh, there is a fluid kind of. Uh, Did she, doctor, just listen to my question carefully and just answer yes or no if you could, okay? Did she tell you that she mistaken identity, didn't know it was Gannon, fired her gun one time, did what she had to do? Or words to that effect? Early on. In this portion we just saw. Beginning, I believe, at the beginning of the then she's talking about other things. Is it about defending? And, and you know, that's not how Gannon died. He didn't die, die from one gunshot wound, did he? No. Why didn't you confront her on that? It does not make logical sense. And on how you got psychiatric interviews, 
In fact, it's amateurish to say, oh, but you said this at that point, how come you're saying it now? This is amateurish work if anyone does that. You have to then follow what is going on and you saw in front of your eyes without asking anything or her. Russian change. You saw what this person said uh, change. I take care of them. I, uh, I hurt the people who are out to hurt them. And I have down here, as I'm looking at that thing, this is this. this dish of, uh, and Dr. Lewis, I, I just want you to respond to my questions, please. I'm okay? trying to do that. And I'm can, saying can you listen to my next question, please? Robert De Niro did a pretty good job at that in the movie Cape Fear as well, didn't he? No. He didn't? Oh. Okay. No, Robert De Niro. Actors, actors do a good job of acting, don't they? No, Robert De Niro was not an outstanding... In fact, he was not depicting a, a monster necessarily in Cape Fear. Uh, no, he did not see it. Did he? Again, All right, I'm going to... But no, it was not a wonderful... Can we agree to disagree on that? Please. See the first game. <laughs> All right. We're going to go uh, to the last clip, Doctor. Okay. And this is longer. Um, this is going to be, uh, I want to say, about an hour and 30 minutes or so. Okay. Um, so are you comfortable there or do you want to go somewhere else? This is going to be a longer clip. Five minutes has water and we can actually, we can get you a drink of water and we're probably going to take a break in about 20 minutes to find a okay, good so place. Will be a bit of a break. Oh yeah, no, I'm not going to have the jury sitting there for all of this. So um, find a good place in about 20 minutes and then we'll take our break there. Sounds good, Judge. Thanks. And this is uh, People's Exhibit 734. It's the afternoon of November 17th, 2022. It starts at eight minutes and 23 seconds. And we're going to go to the end. Find a, a reasonable breaking point. Uh, sure. Place. We just need the TV on. Oh, sorry. And this is the convention. This is the dog on the This is under the balance. I'm Maria. Confess it's not English. Confesso para para men we say a lente of de Rodrigo Lentea say Gana Maria say Mena Sana in Conversano better than. Um, what does it mean? I don't know. What well, we'll made you say it's a convention? But then I saw it. This is the temples. And so now I'm like, confesso. I, Maria, confesso. But we don't know what she's confessing to. I know I was not just told you it says foundation. I don't know what she's But hold on. Did you ever take that in school? No, I mean, it was that. Has to be different in Spanish because of the way in the trade. I hear it. It's not Spanish. Yeah, I knew it was not Spanish, but I don't know Spanish. Yeah. Okay. 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 We would be what? The date. It's not Portuguese. That's what I said. Maybe I did. Maria then Sana Maria is in that was the same mind that it was, it has not then Sana in Copper Sun Well maybe have bees and photocopy French because uh, here it does look as if she's saying and I'm Maria and then, in the same state of mind. Um, Rex 
clear sky. In Pache, rest in peace. Yeah. Aliyo, a.k.a. We say different then something about defending. Uh, and for us to this is updated it would be kind of a free yeah. you think a lot of languages <laughs> <laughs> I like to say in French so okay. uh, and oh and we also say the regular mass and have regular mass and that's not I get by right okay. so I, anybody here <laughs> no uh, yes. Oh, my God. That's the lady who has been here for a while. She keeps going back to her husband. He, he she nodded. And the lawyer to get that here. She gets the domestic violence. Yeah. And I keep talking to her, guys. She's like a young lady. The young lady, like the man who needs to sleep in her grass. Yeah. Oh. So, I know. Oh, she's just getting chopped off. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Well, I could have been a player. Oh, I always look at it. Yeah. Well, she's getting it. That's a good right? It's kind of hot trimmers, I think, from the mass, you know, resting things, right? Mm -hmm. That's about it. It's good. Uh, but you believe that that is a, a confession for Marie? Well, I have still the one word I thought yeah. was the O. Yeah, the confession. That's the end of the rest. Since that. Well, because of the, yeah, that's why I say the blood is the blood of the That's why I thought that that would be different in Spanish because it wasn't. Oh, uh -huh. so sad. Other than that, that's why it was in Spanish. Yeah, well, it's a little mess. I'm sure I guess we should be so lucky that it's a little wrong. So, I was the only one in Spanish. I figured it out so many do you think that we really did it? Well, I didn't. I remember it. And just had little flashbacks or what I think. What are the flashbacks? Just not blood. Yeah. And Tell me about the cave. I just remember seeing someone in my cave. I remember seeing someone in my cave. You remember seeing my daughter and baby crying. Have you ever heard the baby crying with them? Yeah, it's a lot. Really? Yes. See this? I just remember a baby crying and seeing someone in my cave. This is and uh, So, tell me about the person in the game. So, the person was in like a red and black cave. Yeah. How big a person? I recall. Yeah. Yeah, six foot. Man? man. What was it again? The man. Twelve, six feet, and see how it's small. 
I just remember being in a row in a corner or something that I hate being in front of Was he in the corner or were you? No. The man was in the cake in the corner. The man was in the cake in the corner. The cake was red and black. What do you thought yesterday? I think we were what we had said. But Janet got up and was in the cake. Is that I don't remember the candidate to No. 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 Um, yesterday, I mean, I have got the victory was again in a cake. I always even, but I never wanted to be again. Yeah, it was, a, the, it was a man in a cake. Yeah, it was a man in a cake who rose up. <laughs> and where was Ganon during? I don't know. And, you know, it would help. Uh, if I talked around with Maria, because she were nice. And uh, he couldn't help me to control this. She said, I'm shot. So that, uh, you know, it's better to be able to talk in the cloud. She would have never found it. She would have been there. Well, let's see. I mean, would you want to just kind of fade into the valley of the march? And I'm going to go to the video. What is it? Is there someone who knows? Should we all be able to say anything? That's really terrible. Let it go here. No, they just always keep. Oh my God. What is it? That's a good spot to pause it. We pause it at 17.31. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our afternoon recess. If I can have everyone back in the view room at 3.30, we should be here to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Do not do your own independent research about any aspect of the case. And we will see you back at 3.30. All rise for the jury, please. <laughs> You may all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. Uh, court will be in recess until 3 30. All rise.
Court will recall uh, 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury's not present in the courtroom. Is the plan just to continue with the video? That is, Your Honor. Uh, we'll just hit play and then I'll have some questions when the video comes Okay. Out. And how much longer is the video? Looks like it's about an hour and 11 minutes. 1731. An hour and 20 minutes or so. My okay. math is terrible. Sorry. Okay. Your Honor, the parties have talked about maybe going a little bit later today. We think it'll get done with Dr. Lewis. That would be the acceptable report. If we can, I would have to check with the jury because sure, no, it may be done at five. But um, and we have one juror who I know with the accident, right? Yes. So she said good. Oh, uh, okay. So, um, but if we can check with them, it's okay with me. Okay. So. All right, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. So I can put this down. I can move you a little bit closer. Yeah. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358. People that were the record should look like the jury is present in the courtroom. Uh, Mr. Young? Yeah, we'll start the video at 1731. Yeah, the only one say, really bad. I'm thinking of the cyber zombie. I'm thinking of the cyber Did they go? Where we got to be in that one way. In which story is letter to me? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Where we Tell me that. In the region, and with the language it's in, and then in the region. 
um, what is that? How many of you have to be? Can you hear me? It's really good. It's good. We just. And you want to make a 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 you want to Okay, can you translate? Would you translate the film? I can ask the other person. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to to see the impossible to to mess from the other I'm going to tell you to get what is here. I am the best. I'm the best, you know. I can bet when it's self defense, but what did you do? I had the impression that we don't want to be ready to be ready before you would have to get in. Okay. That you feel you are more powerful and more in control of it. David was a funnel. He was a funnel. He was a funnel. He was a funnel. He Harmony sometimes means people not sounding out of key with each other. Key is one of the is on the part of the of small enough, but harmony was addressed to how many was left. And how old is her? And who will list it? And who's in the room? In the room. Let's just get that. 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 Let's just get and it's just a little bit of 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 Light ballasted Gannon um, and Harmony. I think if I was the button, I have said, Ballasted Gannon and Harmony. And Harmony is 10 years old. When was Gannon? In East 
She wasn't going to help. She was going to help with herself. Leticia keeps. She's the man. So. Oh, she didn't like feeling the university. It's all about the Well, it's kind of putting two and two together. Uh, Okay, she's been happy with herself. I'm confused. What is like? What is like? What? I can understand. You don't know what's but you know it's the first day it's like. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he bought it again. How did you? Did I buy the property? I thought you said that you left the property. No. I need to spell that and use the thing. I thought that it was the same one. No. Who was the only standard? James. Oh, I had James. You know why I blessed it? That's easy. That's easy. Tell me about the truth. Are you? 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 you? Are 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 because uh, Leticia went with Dan after he died. I had a spot to him. What room did you do? Well, they were in the I was in the house. Left alone. Taking care of other people? Really? Getting rid of them? No. What? What? You got out of the way. I think I'm out of money. 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 I who is the someone who is going to be a Hold it. 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 Hold do you have family? Mm-hmm. I don't need them. Did you do them? They all die. Really? You want You should know this. What? Do you think I will order on the empty people who are in? Without having a vaccine. What's that, sir? You know what I'm saying? Of course not. So, 
Why did Leticia Day and Dickert? She did not publish it. No, she did not. Well, it's just that because I only know you. I mean, you do not. But I mean, you do not know. As I understand it, this I think part of the wrong. I think part of the wrong. Do you know? Do you know? And I don't know. Yeah. Why did she? Why did she get rid of him? Yeah, slide. She didn't have that. Who did? Did you? Not around people, like I said. So, did you get something? Um, so, you got something to trust. Like I said, I'm not. Tell me. Uh, yeah. I have to get in the front. I'm just here. Then the end of the world. How did you manage to know? If I didn't get to know the hospital. But him, she was not small. Lena tried to help her. Lena tried to help her. Lena tried to help her. Really? Was he going to bear with him? Of course, Lena was there. He put his leg into it. She held a very end of the What did they call it? No. She was speaking. She was what? She was a shy. They grew up. No, not a picture. But she seemed blood. She wondered why there was blood everywhere. Um, yeah. So she wasn't there with them. When you were shy. No, I wasn't speaking. She, and she stayed just in life. It's my like understanding it's you. that you shot up the man with the cave. That correct? Correct. Um, did it turn out to be again? Not to be How did it happen later? How did it turn out to be later? We are not going to have it, but it was a small be. I don't know yet. I have to figure out what to do with it later. Once it was scanned, figure out what to do with it. To call us a friend, but not be sent to models, figure it out, you know. So there were two people? No. No, I have to call some friends to call me out, you know. You had to call some friends to help me out to do what? To not get into the body. But when the word of the man in the cave, we both found the man in the cave, I thought it was the man in the cave, it's not. It was again. But after the people came to the end. Do you have any idea why, yet, in your recollection, you were out of time, seemed to be a man in the cave? I don't know. What are you doing? It's wonderful. Just let me figure out the news. Here, I think Tisha showed that he was on that language, right? She said he was on that language. She said he was on that language. Do you think that he could have stood up and put the blanket around him so that he looked like the man? There could be a possibility, but to me it was a key. What? But, but to me it was a key. Yeah. The so man's trial, I was wondering, because then it turned out to be gay. And you meant to only shoot a man with a gate. What did you see he was doing? What to shoot? He's going to the farm, but he's here. I think that hurts. And then I was here. Why would a man be in a house with a gate? No. Do you allow a man normal to be? I think that the person had a man with a gate. Or she drew her down and said, no. 
that I didn't know. But we were like, no. Why did you, I do get both to the study? You mean you shouldn't have been? Correct. Um, special training. You know, my pastor. Who were you in your past life? I already told you I can't tell you about my family. And that you tell me, she told me that you're best. Yeah. Can you put me in touch with somebody who could tell me about why they took in Florida? Tell me some of the reasoning behind it. Because I've been practicing with you here first. You have to. From fact, we'll see you here. Yes. That's not a long time. So, when we were to tell me that Leticia was someone else, perhaps, put her in the car and went to Florida, we would be protected for them. Getting her to know? I cannot be her in the bubble, but protected for us. Yeah. So, see, I think I have a motion to have it. I think we take it away. Doesn't matter who it is in the end. I'm not going to cry with the phone book. So what happened? What is going to be to you? Well, I'm going to do it. How do you feel about talking with me? Are you a doctor? Am I a what? Are you a doctor? A what? A doctor. Dirt? So. Correct. A threat. A threat. A threat. A threat. Yeah. I do my best to, to help produce you. So I would do it. But if I had emotions, yeah. I would I can't cry. You can't cry. Yeah. Uh, cry. You lose your power. Mm -hmm. So if that is not up to you, get rid of the body, it's easy to me. Can the teeth so well? She tried to get a phone and she can't. But I'm with me. What did you do your son to the teeth? A very long, long. How old was she? Being the snowy at 16. Did we eat 16? It's about that long ago. She's pretty old. What was going on with her when you came? She doesn't have to listen. Pardon me? She doesn't have to listen. That doesn't quite explain why you came. She puts herself in a lot of trouble. What do you think of when she brought herself into my shoes? She doesn't have to listen. Yeah, and what she do? Yeah, I don't have to communicate effectively. Yeah. Because there's only one other problem, she should be involved in the She's covering What is going on with her name? Because you say you help her. So there must be something she needs to help with. Her. What was that to her before? You sizing me up? Interesting. You don't really know. I don't know what. You don't really know what's going on. No, I can kind of wonder if she has a lot of mistreatment by men. So it certainly makes me wonder if someone was mistreating her. Is that true? Do you really know where she was on my crooks? Why she is. You do really know why she does her neck drugs? Why she does? Why she does her neck drugs? Oh, why she doesn't like drugs? I don't like it. Why doesn't she like drugs? Because I'm still dead and I'm still selling her drugs. Yeah. That's selling her drugs? Selling her four drugs. Oh, she's 
which is now the set. Jane suggests that the selling her would be right to a little now see. That's right. What was that, Andrew? He was making her drive her about a car and getting drugs. Or again, to try to get her to spam any her drugs. Is that he was. Did she not do? Did she? No, she did not. Uh, did she? She hit him across the head with a board. She hit him with a board. Who? James. Um, when you saw that boy, when the man was coming with the cake, he had a hold on top of his head. Um, what I was wondering is if you were anything, I would mistake him or see. Uh, hit him on the head with a board or with a with something. No. He hit his head on the floor. He hit his head on what? On the floor? On the floor? Hmm. I don't think you've seen the picture of that day. He hit his head on the floor. There was a baseball in the floor in the wood. He had a jump of something. Hmm. It was on the floor. There's days for us to get out of her, doesn't mean it is him. It's a bit of a negative thing. Just don't want to tell you this happened. Right? That's what happened. You just said on the days for her. That's a bit. Okay, let's just go back. Let's get the picture. I'm going to get a set on top of this guy. And then I'm going to tell you how to. That's all it means. Um, so James was going to sell the t shirt. I don't know if you did. I don't know if you did. I don't know if you yeah. When she was gathered around and said, okay. He didn't go out to her. Which is why there's kids in the family. Who to get it? Yeah. There's babies in the back. Why are you babies? With that seat. She likes the babies. So, for how long did she have to? What did you decide? What changed from the air? And then you have to be like that. Just be down with a board. And so she be down with a board and be fine. She beat James with board. Where was it? It is all he's looking. What did he do? Did you tell No, she was so me. He didn't have told anymore. Was it really you? <laughs> yeah. What makes you feel? Because it didn't have told anymore. Is that reasonable doubt can come from evidence or lack of evidence? And it's any reasonable doubt, any one of these things would be a reasonable doubt. And any piece of evidence you're missing would be a reasonable doubt. And I want to 
sort of equate this to something that we heard about during this trial, and that's the scientific method. Who's so successful is because we don't guess. Anyone who has one of these should be amazed at what science can do. But the reason it can do that is because we never guess. You might have a hypothesis, and it might be a good hypothesis, and you might look at what all the evidence that has led up to that point is, and you might say, yeah, I, that's a great hypothesis. But no scientist ever, under any circumstances, would say, okay, we'll just accept it as true. You test it, you look at it, you get the evidence that you need. That's what reasonable doubt means, is that you get the evidence you need, and you never, ever just accept a guess. As I said, Ms. Barbosa is right. We should be happy that the police officers were willing to do this. But as time goes on, the, the desire to solve a crime like this distracts and causes people to become narrow sighted. In the words of the jury instructions, or more precisely, what it tells you you can't do is. It allows their emotions to overcome their rational thought process. Following them along when they were going to Florida, following them along with her, did she know? Isn't she really? I think she did. What? I think she did. I think she did. How did she know? Nothing. She had a little Did you know that Gannon was in bed? No. There's no Gannon in that room, but it turned out so. Someone else got married before she got caught, and people who know them. I don't know how this is hard for you to understand. What do I understand? You can see it. We're over there to Florida. And then after she got the suitcase, and she said, I'm not going to die. I told you I had someone else to be left. Well, she felt better. But what it was, put again in the suitcase, and get to there, and then we went to Florida, and then we went to and then we just did all this together. We didn't fall off the bridge or something. I did a and she did not do that. And I had someone else to do that. I already told you that. I think that's some of the time. I already told you that. But I think he knew that she was an alert. But she was down in the Of course she was. So what would you do? She was going to move to She was going to move to Prada. She was going to move there. She won. That's her same place. I don't know who made the last part of that, but I mean, do you think she'll tell me? I don't know, maybe if you let her, then I think we'd be better. What would she get away from? I mean, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, you say you don't have any marks. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't just, 
the facilities of that from happening to get. And to be able to hear myself because of my heart every day and all of my Then all the point is. Does it mean that they had any hard If she does, to go would you make a difference, me? And if you per se, you not like it. Or was not everything. Is all the How she I don't know if she I feel like I'm kind of the poison is here. And what did they find him? No, but they have an email. Pardon? Another thing they found him. Another email did something they tell. No, they did not switch. Should I be the one that there? To jump all the time, too. Yes. And what happened? I think. And what did you jump? Would you just write down all that? Would you just write down the stuff? Yeah. So that she could hurt herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did she hurt herself? That would happen to her. Why would you think so, man? You can't come like me, doesn't care. Don't care about other people. This is for good. She has so many good, but she hates that she hates it. Right? You have so many good, but don't hurt her. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Maybe he yeah. had a couple here or cutting it. How did you do it? I was driving to run out of someone else's hand. Yeah. You know what? Someone really don't shoot on. You? Oh. Perfect. I just need to kill. I don't think we've got a shot. Well, how did you kill him? Let's see. There's a man like it was, yeah, it's not a good thing. I just thought I would get rid of the bottle. And I just thought I would get rid of the bottle. That the shooting person don't occur. So much. And the poor lady. I don't need my social life. I don't need my social life. I don't need my social life. So, so did the past too, you know. I think you read a lot. You know, I don't read it all. You yeah, don't read it all. No, so where do you get your kind of psychiatric conclusion? So I did. And I love trying to brush up him. Really? Long, long time ago. To who? How many months? Yeah. You're the first one we should come down. Yeah. Are you? No. Um, yeah. You know, it seems to me that 
that's when you want to do right by something. We seem to hear about Leticia that your thing gets kind of wacky. And she gets blamed for stuff that is really pretty well. No, it's very rare. But this is a pretty serious thing. What about odds? They're very, very slim. What about odds? Usually I never call my own things. Well, in this case, she takes the blame. That's perhaps why we don't get caught because someone takes the blame. But I always take over her. Do you think the times that I take over her and I rescue her versus the time that I make a mistake? Say, okay, you take over her. And the good always the bad man. What if you tell me the good thoughts you take it over for me and you have to do it in the From the very beginning, I'm going to save her life multiple, multiple times. The good always the bad. If I had not done those things, she would not even be here today. So why does it matter? If I make a mistake, why does that matter? I mean, you have special powers, but I'm not perfect. What's the opposite? Oh, I mean, this is a real one. Hey, do you think I'm going to make a mistake? I think. Do you think I'm going to make a mistake? You. Do you think I'm going to make a mistake? No. I can't understand everything. I have a little bit of money on the stage. Yes. Do I like living when I'm going to be living when you do? No. No. So what do you do to yourself? Try to harm this time. But you say that the good you do yourself. And then when she was in the what did you mean? I didn't stop helping her until she's a woman. I didn't stop helping her until she was a woman. How old was she? She was still a teenager. And what did you do for her? I took her from Chase. And how did you do that? He could her in the pool one time and she could not spend it. And said, so, She threw her in the pool and she could not spend it. He threw her in the pool and she could not spend it. She could swim right over the go, but she got grass. Then perhaps we are saved there. How do you say that? Or the lay of well, she will blow them. Did you? And he's a rare book. Tell me, or does anyone else know about this? Like the book. Have an endorsed child song card. Who is it? Was that Miss Pearl's house? And Brenda went there to Pearl's house. I'm sorry. Brenda went to Pearl's house. And Brenda, Brenda, we are winter. I don't know what Brenda did. I don't know anyone. I don't think so. Who's Brenda? She's kind of losing Seattle. She's going to take her to Seattle. She tells her. Does she sometimes take over? No, British family. Do you know any Brenda? Yeah, that's for um, the teacher's aid. Oh. And she says that Brenda has been helpful to her. Even to go to Pearl's house. Pearl's house is where they have Pearl. And do you know Pearl? No. And, and that's where she's swimming with her. And he was here on Jay's car. So who would I decide to? Maybe ask to speak to Pearl. Mm -hmm. can, can you do that? Do you know Pearl? Or do you know? We don't know Pearl. Why do you? I don't, I don't know. We don't know what you do. Okay. I can ask a friend.
Well, that's to do the work. You're in the car and try to kill yourself. When was it? When was it? She tried to put herself in a jeep and she learned how to get a pretty. And did you do anything to help? What did you do? I have to get out of the car. Get out of the car. Cross city. But what do you do when she wants to kill herself? No, she's not quite good that she wants to live. So help me. She tried to kill herself. And she thought she saw her friends in the car. She saw, she saw her ex husband in the car. Was he with her? She thought she already saw him. Mm -hmm. So she told the king. Mm -hmm. Who knows her? What about her? She's very little before you came. Who knows about her? Does anyone know her? Who's this? Yeah. 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 I don't know. She has friends. But I have friends, but she doesn't. Mm -hmm. Why did you sit with her? Because she did not have any. She did not have a friend. She did not have a partner. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know if you want to. That you had other than the Yeah. Yeah. And you? I didn't even think that way. Of what? Of the girl. Ready for the other now, tell me. Did you do it? Huh. No. But not what you had to do. from it. So you have lots of secrets. You know, this time it looks like the JCs we don't get the money for stuff that you were involved in. I'm so predictable. Oh, you're pretending. So many of us are hurt, or else they're going to go. What's my child's work? I'm still so protective. And how do you protect her from taking the lead on this? That can't hurt her. It doesn't cause her physical pain. Is that the only kind of pain you protect her from? Yes. What about the physical pain? I can't control that. It's interesting. And you would keep to that limit. Can we do anything for you? Or you know, think that it's a pretty good call. Yeah, yes, these people here playing have any questions. I don't answer to them. Let me see what I'm asking you. Do you have anything you'd like me to ask? To move the people that helped again in the world. They don't. The who would do that? I would get it before. What's that? Who is the question? Who 
and then we get started. I call some room that I told you. I call some friends that I told you when I'm in the day And then she went up to Seth Brown. Who is she? TC. I told you my involvement in this. I mean, what do you mean, woman, in this? I have to tell you who I called. Why? This is not important. Well, it's, it's pretty you already said she would take the ring for that, but I'm not going to tell you who was involved. Well, are we making a move? That's the point to do. Because I made Charlie Carly, there's something you can turn to Carly. How do you feel that I'm wrong? That's what you're looking at. I'm just saying you have been for Excuse me? Even from Bali? I don't think it's a party if she needs me to, but I almost look at the You wouldn't return to Bali. No. Is someone toss? Yeah, I think they are. You want to see what is it? I'm not that. They were not trying to toss them out. I've never said that. They were not trying to toss them out. What were we doing? What do you think? Some stupid stuff. We don't want to talk about something. But you went. So you want me to think you could say what the person told me? You know that I have that again for what? Absolutely. Yeah. So, why did you hear? Person was saying like this, they didn't have to come on. To get rid of the Bible. Yeah. Where did you go? With the water for money, would it cut me? Correct. The one that just falls on the baby, and all of them. So, what did they miss the book there? The money didn't go to my house. Who would this? Like I said, I'm not getting any names, so the money did not come to my So, as far as you know, she went to Florida to help other people. She was not in the right mind. She did not know what she was supposed to do with the other people. She was not in the right mind. Why can't we stay with you? I don't know how long before we can stay. Well, you said she wasn't in the right mind. Because I told her she was the family she did not know. Would you tell her that? She was supposed to be the guy to get the money. Yeah. And she did not know that. What did she do instead? She was pretty be driving in the wrong routes. There's nothing for her route from school to fire. No other her, she, you know, she was supposed to be in the right place. She did not need the right place. Okay. It's a wrong path. Correct. Yeah. So she, it was, no, it was all perfect. But they had made it. So you made the deal in for Korean and Slovak. But still, apparently she did get rid of the body. It was. It was a culture. She did not need the people. The people are here. They didn't have their money. I know. But the, somebody tossed the body out of the car. Correct. And they didn't have their money. There was no money. If they tossed the body? Yes, she never had the body. Maybe she did. She did not take the bodies and brought down. Who took the body? You just asked me this question. Yeah. They're not accepting the truth. Well, I'm confused. Okay. They're not accepting the truth. She never had the body. So I'll just be fighting with stupid. But there's there is no thing, there is no evidence of her having the body there. Uh, wasn't there evidence? The no. suitcase wasn't a big. That's not evidence of her having the body from her missing heart. 
No. The suitcase with the body according to Harlem was in the van. No, that's that they were. That's what Harlem says. Or I don't know what Harlem says. And then the suitcase was found in Harlem away from London, told that she was staying in. She did not think it from time to time. I would not know. No. The people did not meet. How did Dan get all my cups on? No, they cuts. There were cuts. I don't know anything about them. She asked me here. She does not. I mean, it's very simple. It's something that I'm rubbing on. I don't know anything about them. I don't know what that is. That's a cut. So you start to even you know them. I don't know this. I did not cut any of them. I don't know. Yeah. And then I'm coming in. No, that's a somebody hit him with something. That's a cut. That's the ball. Why are you going to come the ball? That's when he was. When you were in the are you talking about? When you were in the shower, did you know that? Are you talking about? I don't know what it was. Are you talking about? Did you know? 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 Did you see? The devil. No, we are not working. Then straight by the and say you walked out. Yeah, so you went on the foot. Yeah, but you could person no identity. No, no. How did you feel when you realized it again? I told you I did not know. It was I know that I recognized him, and I told you I did not have emotions to know that bit. I don't have any insight. No, I think that you do that. I don't have any insight. What did you do instead of the time? What? You have to I don't have any insight. I didn't say anything. I'm sorry that they have to put a TCA. What? Because of the hair dye. And if she's upset, I'm upset. Are you definitely? She's upset. Yes. Yeah. We suggested underneath that it's trying to put me aside. You do. You're acting with you, though. And you're so good at staring at my face. That's what you but um, I think that if you go back and that's the second to the TC. Maybe. It's good sign, you know. It's good sign. Do you know anyone who knows? Uh, why did you have to find her? And who helped her? Did you know anyone who could help you? Hmm? No, I didn't have to drive. I told you I didn't. I told you I didn't have to Because of these people. But I mean, do you know who, like, who helped her? Yeah. Do you know anyone? She already told you that she will take good time out of the bad. She already told you. You do not understand. She did not know who you think people are. You don't understand how serious that is. You think this is a joke? Don't look at this. It's not a joke. 
Those are petty charges. Do you think this is a draw? That is it. You cannot help on these people. I don't think you guys are understanding how serious that is. You mean they would kill me? You see, don't understand. It's not. It's not funny. It's not made up. It's not an illusion. It's for real. The money wasn't there. You can't snitch. I don't understand why you don't get this. Can you tell me what's in the Tissue Valley? Who is all the research? What's in the Valley? What is falling in your people along the friends? Do you think she went about a teaching salary? What is wrong with you people? What else do you think she was doing? Do you think it was legal? And so she, that's how she got all the money. Do you really think it was legal? You don't want me to stand here and I'm talking to us? No, I don't think it's legal. Okay. Okay. She didn't do bad things to bad people, to good people, bad people, none of those. Kind of. She's not going to tell you that. That's a part of the piece that you cannot ever know. Because you they have no fun. Do you get a judge for this situation? No. Because I think I'm saying that you guys live in a perfect world and it's kind of. Big time. Okay. You live in a perfect world. It's not a game. It's not a game. It's not a game. But you're saying that there are very powerful people in the land. Absolutely. When it comes to that part. Absolutely. Give me answer to what you want in the world. But I would never give you answers to the world. Definitely. Jump in. Cannot. Well, we just we don't really want to know who these people are. We just want to know how. Um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. we got into these things. Yeah. Who is this? So I'm struggling to do all that. So, yeah. so because I'm struggling. So many, but Maria has another power. Is she not see me? Can I see the muscle that I have? Mm -hmm. So you're saying that you could not do it. I could do anything. Do you have any other questions you want to ask? Do you know anybody who could tell about getting that cut? Where was the cuts Okay. Yeah, cuts on his hands and his arms and his chest. And he's moved back. You don't have to take as a bad thing? No. You promise? Absolutely. He had a knife in his head. And 
been like that. They didn't know who's in there. There was something like it. But this one who made a name. That guy who had been asked last time. That's why they were like zombies. He was in the back and he won't come in the back. You see here? Yes. What can I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Do I didn't know. Yeah, it's a It's a real name. It's a real person. I was dumped in. How did you decide him? Stumped in. Stumped in. Stumped in. Stumped in. Stumped in. Stumped in. Stumped you put them with the gun and then what the way with the gun and suddenly he's moving on. Does that make sense? That's how it's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like she's going to kill them. Mm-hmm. Which is with the gun? With the gun? Which is with the gun? 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 You dropped it out of the gun? I don't know. Do you know? With the gun? 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 They weren't necessarily in the gun. Or that because I didn't know that he had the cuts on him when we were on the one and a half. And they noticed when we were doing with that whole thing, they were just from the blood on the Yeah. Yes. Who called the work then? And they were not. Because if you have a guy said it was coming, and she was bringing. Screaming and screaming. We have to raise him again. We have to try to clean the room. She was being bad. Then we do all that and figure it out. It's not real. This thing where they have Then we just clean it all up. This thing where they have them. She doesn't have to fix it. Make everything back to me the way it was. Nothing going to happen. It was real. And she said, I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital. Yeah. And and she was trying to take him to the hospital, and Lena was getting up spying, he wasn't asking. So Lena was taking the body instead of him, that's what it's doing. Lena. Lena? Lena? Is that me? Lena was taking the body to go upstairs to the hospital. It was just laying there. It's living that family. I was making this up. Trying to breathe. She was trying to get able to breathe. They had a lot of workers could not breathe. She was. They didn't seem to be at all. So she didn't mean to bring her to the dead. No. Tell me about it. What did you do? When you shot the gun, who did you go to? And now, what did you say? So when came back, I was talking. But she didn't recognize it. No, I was going to recall it. Did you think it was James? I thought it was someone in the cave. You could have been a monster. Who was the one who kept the uh, case? James. James. Huh? Yeah, I didn't think it was James. Something wrong with him. Pardon? Something wrong with him. I still don't understand. No, I don't Arms out James. What is this one? The army come out? Let's see if I am Did they leave from army? Did they leave from army? Did they leave from army? Did they leave but how many was little baby? She said it. No one was trying to help. Oh, the question is, like, see, or, you know, that was all good. As you were looking at it, it was three teaspoons, whatever. Would you ever hear me? I don't 
You must have felt the need of it. And indeed, he did. Why did he have the night? Sometimes I've got the night when you think it was like. Do you ever change the words? Would it ever have things been a No, he would say he sold him He was going to Even though it's the guy for that. Good. And then he's just about a month ago, I said, yeah, try to get him for it. So She did not want to know that 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 she did not want to Yeah. Again, the Spanish army was raided. The Spanish branch was just to grab a weapon and smile. So, who is this? She did not want to be more than him. No, she would never harm him. You didn't answer her question. What, what is this thing like you need to be able to share this list? Stop the tape. Just the time. Okay. So that we can get some questions. Okay. Dr. Lewis, how are you doing? Yeah, you mean you want me to help you? I got you. Okay. Do you want to turn the TV up? And I'll turn the lights back on. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Lewis, I want you to do the best you can just to answer my question so we can get through this quickly, okay? Is that fair? Um, this Latin confession that you talked about in the beginning, you lost that, right? Yeah, I mean, don't know where, where it is. Even though you asked to have copies done, you never found that confession again, correct? No, I was unaware of it. So it was on. Okay. Now, do you still think, having watched this video, that it was a good idea to have Mr. Cellini in there with you? 
you think it's appropriate for Mr. Cellini to plant the seed with the defendant that it was James that she actually shot? I don't think that planted any seeds. I don't think that she came up with that. I think that uh, I appreciated watching all of it was how extremely confused was. I think it was. Uh, I think that it did help for him. It's so complicated. Uh, who knew much more of all of the details. It helps his theory. And when he asked, when he asked, do you think it was James? That helps the theory of the defense, right? That somehow she mistaken a little 11 year old boy for the stepson that's been, or the stepfather that's been dead uh, for uh, since 2004. I'm not aware that this is his theory. Can you explain? Why at one point the defendant could not see or hear Mr. Cellini? He had to repeat a question that Mr. Cellini asked. And then when Mr. Cellini asked about Harley, she answered it no problem. How does that happen? Did that not go as according to script? I don't know what the script is or what you're referring to. I don't know why it's what meaning that has. We did not know what had happened. When she was pretending to be Maria, she said, I can't see them. Do you recall that? I don't recall pretending to have, by the way, seen a couple of cases where uh, in one iteration of it, and either blind or a sense. And then she was out of, uh, somehow cured and could see him and answer questions, no problem. This, this happens. It is well it's fluid. Nurture, and I've only seen it. Why did you ask the defendant if she thought it was a devil or a demon? Simply wondering. What did you? Looking for evidence of psychosis, perhaps? Oh, I'm not looking. I am not looking for evidence of anything. I'm looking what she perceived. Because I know no evidence that she hated me again. So that she, uh, that she harmed her in any way that I couldn't find a precipitating cause. Wonder since it is fairly common for people kind of dangerous or frightening thing. It apparently had some notion of some material gate that uh, it was either here or there to find out did she see something different? And uh, it did not seem to affect what she said. She uh, she clearly does not know. What, uh, what was going on or she just doesn't want to tell you right she just can't bring herself to tell you what she did to gannon could she well i think that you're correct that she something about what had happened there that is psychologically i question that um, <coughs> she did it well, and, and here's and here's what I want you to consider. Okay, this whole story about her acting in self-defense and Gannon having a knife and she thinking that it's uh, crazy ass James or whatever the heck his name is and shoots him, and then it turns to self-defense. And it turns into someone gets rid of the body. It's just her not being able to tell you what she did to Gannon. Is that true? Tell us what she did. And here's and here's the flaw in your theory. What is my theory? I'm not sure. The theory that she was had a different personality and Maria, the sociopath, did this murder. Okay. No. You can't explain, no, Doctor. That is you not cannot. My theory. Do not. Well, what's your theory? You're saying she's legally insane. Yes. My theory. Clearly, I guess we don't. 
and that she hallucinates that she is delusional and that her, her line of thinking is confused, addled, and frightened. And but uh, I don't have a particular theory that she killed this person for that that reason. Why didn't you ask her about why she gave Gannon an excessive amount of hydrocodone? I didn't know that she gave that. Do you think that's important? Only if I know for sure she gave somebody that. He read the autopsy report. I you know it's there. I know that he had this. I don't know who gave it to him. I've had many cases where children have excessive amounts of poisonous things in their food. But there are many different reasons for it. those are my questions. Thanks. I have no further questions for this witness. Your director, I'll try to go. Dr. Lewis, how are you? We're not going to rehash everything, but I do want to clear up just a couple of things with you. One, in regards to the EEG and the emails um, that were shown to you. Really? As far as you saying that oh, let's hold off on doing the EEG. Yes. Um, that was at that point in time, then you indicated that you want to do the evaluation first. You recall that from the emails? Well, that there were other things to do, and uh, it was not something that I was going to get hung up on at that moment. At that point in time. And then in a report that you did for the court on February 12th, in that report, you put down the need you thought for both an MRI and an EEG, correct? Correct. And you recall in relation to this court, but the issue being that this court would not give us any more time to get those things done. Me relating that to you. I'm going to what I heard was that the court so sustains. I was told. Yeah, I have an objection. Stop. Okay. The objection was sustained. The witness will uh, stop responding to a question when an objection has been sustained the jury will disregard the witness's answer you can ask another question all right um moving on to some of the other stuff the district attorney on his cross insinuated some stuff that the motive for killing gannon was somehow that miss stout wanted to move to florida does that make any rational sense Can you think of any way that brutally murdering Gannon would enable her to move to Florida? Can you think any sense how that would fit into any plan to move to Florida? Does that make any rational sense whatsoever? If the definition of insanity in Colorado is that a person is incapable of distinguishing right from wrong with respect to, um, to an act, would that change your opinion on Ms. Dow being legally insane at the time of Dan Gannon's death? That last part that we were there, the interview, that was the last kind of part of a long three days of interviewing Ms. Dow. Correct. Had I expressed my frustration that she wouldn't account for taking Gannon to Florida or she wouldn't account for the stab, the stab wounds? Objection on cause for speculation as to what Mr. Sweeney was thinking. Had I expressed well, that to you? He said expressed. So I think. Well, then it's hearsay. Well, I can't repeat what Mr. Green has said, but. Maybe you should move to your next question and I can see where you're going. Was there ever any attempt by myself saying I need by myself to try to get her to say something specific or some type of theory or anything like that that I had done with you? Okay. If you were aware, that those videotapes <clears throat> were all going to be turned over to the district attorney. You're also aware that I have had years plus of confidential communications with Ms. Stout. 
Are you aware of that? I assumed it. I and if I was going to do something unethical, as they seem to be implying, wouldn't it make, I would have just been able to do that confidentially instead of on an open video. I'm going to object to that form of question. Stay. If I was trying to feed her a story, it wouldn't make any sense for me to do it in that setting where it's recorded, would it? in any of the materials or anything else that you have looked at is there any other rational explanation as to why miss stout did this other than the psychotic episode any type of motive i am I'm unaware of any any The state hospital has diagnosed her with borderline personality disorder. Are you aware of that? Yes. Are there similarities between borderline personality disorder and DID? Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope of cross. <laughs> oh, wow. Are there similarities between borderline personality disorder and DID? Yes, they are. What are some of those similarities? Well, uh, they had similarities to uh, reality, what is real, what is real. Difference in ability to If Ms. Stalk had sometime in the years preceding this event had Googled, I don't like my stepson, will that possibly explain the rage in which this homicide occurred? Okay. Yes. Are you still firm in your opinion, your expert opinion, based upon almost well over 50, 60 years of practice, then in your expert opinion, Ms. Stauk was insane at the time of the death. Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Do you learn, have you learned lots of things over your experience in interviewing and evaluating people with DID? What? Over the, what, over 40, 40 yes, yes. <laughs> over 40 plus 50 years. Have you learned at picking up on subtle cues? Um, have you learned or on your experience that is it unusual for alters to have almost fantasy type lives? I would say it's a definition of the it is a fantasy. Are in your experience, are the alters perceiving reality as a rational person would. Thinking of oneself as someone other than the everyday person that we meet and know. Um, this is a fantasy, often a very shameful, different, uh, altering kind of entity. It, it's not a consistent, a typical life history with ordinary relationships and family ties that, that go on as we saw here. It, it, it can vary within the 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And <clears throat> Dr. Lewis, we're getting close to the end of the day. Is there anything last that you think is really important for this jury to know or understand about your diagnosis? It's uh, what you what you call it. what you call it is so much less important than what you understand about it. What you understand about it is that oh, this individual has been living a psychotic life unrelated to reality related to the way you or I or the rest of us experience reality, that it changes. It has been often diagnosed as schizophrenia when people to whether association has any of the signs, symptoms, behaviors as what we call schizophrenia. Visual, very odd relationships, inability to sustain going. I don't care for it. Whether you think psychosis is dissociative. It's that. The person is living psychotic life. Similarly, similarly that I am not a typical of her, that not stimuli that the rest of us is. I have an objection uh, based on that last answer uh, with regards to what we received in her scope of her request that had been stricken. Mr. Tolini. I mean, I think that was in her report and she was expounding on what she had seen in the video and what was going on. Well, I'm going to allow it. I'm also going to end this answer. Okay. And then lastly, Dr. Lewis, just one other question um, that I had. Would it then, if somebody was suffering that type of mental illness, would it be possible for a daughter who has been with them most of her life not to be aware of it? That's a tough question because to be aware of it would respond a whole second answer. Not to be aware of it. To be aware of the term dissociation, not to be able to conceptualize psychosis. That, of course, is possible. But just to say not to be aware of it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Right. Do any of the jurors have any questions for Dr. Lewis? Looks like we have we passed all of them forward and uh, retrieve those in terms of approach, please.
paragraph. So that's paragraph two. Right. Okay, then you're right. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. Yeah. So, because I, I I agree that's how they have to do that. Right. But I think it it starts out with if you found the defendant guilty of one or more, I think that relates to Roman numeral two. Your next paragraph is if, however, you found the defendant not guilty of any one of the following charges, then sign Roman numeral one, and that would be right because Roman numeral one is the not guilty with the interrogatory on page two. Guilty is um, Roman numeral two. Okay. So. I have a problem making all the corrections, including the ones that you. Okay. Uh, I'll. Um, you want to give me a hard copy, and I'll just make all the. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I can approach. Yep. Let's see, where was it? Here is the Roman numeral one and Roman numeral two issue. Here is the statutory language. Notice one as well. Yes, please. And that'll uh, that should just be stock, right? Yeah. yeah. There's the qualified witness. Records and so forth are digitation by this total. Whatever you come up with. Okay. Okay. All right. And then uh, the only quite the only instruction that we'll still have an issue with um, that we'll have to argue about is you have a question or an instruction that says the question of the defendant's sanity or insanity has reference to her mental condition at the time of the alleged acts, the condition of the defendant's mind previous to the act charged and since that time may be considered only to aid you in determining her sanity or insanity at the time of the acts charged. And Your I, Honor, I'll take that out if defense counsel wants it out, or we can leave it in. Would it in or out? If you got a good case law, that, that's a good one structure. I think we should keep it in. I'm, I'm fine with it in. I think. Okay. Just wanted. It, it, I think it's a le uh, correct legal state or correct statement of the law. So okay. So take care of those. Then um, I want the attorneys here on Friday morning, eight thirty. Eight three zero. Directed at me. Just making sure. So eight thirty, and then we can talk about the jury instructions, and we should be in a position that maybe what can happen is uh, rest, rest uh, instruction. And um, I will take a break before we start into the um, closings, uh, because I think Five. I think it's only fair that the jury consider it that way. So okay. Judge, the only final thing, those documents from Dr. Lewis, I'm fine with just uploading them. We've had, I don't know how you want them to be uploaded, if you want them to be suppressed or somehow protected, but we've had that issue in the past. They're they're covered by C, uh, CJD, uh, I think it's 0905 uh, or 0509. I, um, there's a chief justice directive that has to deal with that. And then there are um, internal regulations because I'm assuming that it has to do with mental health, um, it should be uploaded as uh, sealed. So that's been the problem in the past that when we've done that, then somebody has then unsealed them okay. and then they've gotten out. So that's why we've asked uh, in the past for maybe the it, court to upload. The it. easiest way to do, upload it, suppress it, let us know when you've uploaded it. Okay. Then we will change the um, status from suppressed to sealed and, it should, and nobody else should be able to change it except us. Okay. That may be the difference is that if the attorney's uploaded is sealed, maybe somebody else can uh, change it. But I think that's right. Yeah. If if you upload it as suppressed, let us know it's there. We'll change it to sealed. Um, then it should be fine. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Court will be in recess. Right. Does anybody just need a court?